Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board and Board of Health meeting July 25th, 2018 at 7 p.m. here at the municipal offices in South Deerfield. Um, first, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please rise? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Just so everyone knows that this meeting is recorded. Um, we have minutes from July 17th. Have you all had a chance to read it? Yes. Yes. I, I make a motion we approve them as presented. Second. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you Aye. for doing a good job, Diana. I didn't. Oh, Wendy, thank you. It was very clear. I think they're that good. <laughs> I, I like when you both do it, but this was a nice short version. <laughs> it was so a good noted. job. <laughs> good job. Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, we have uh, Mr. Craig Warner who wants to speak to us about our cell tower again. Come on up. Welcome. Um, I guess to quickly recap, um, I was here in November to talk about the tower we own uh, up on Pecumtuck Ridge. There's two towers. We own one of them. Uh, it's probably going to need to be replaced in the very near future. And I came to the board with kind of an idea that if there was a desire to move the tower further away from the cliff, basically for an aesthetic uh, appearance from down below and also to help preserve the cliff, that we would purchase additional land from the town and be able to move the tower away. Um, I think there's been kind of confusion since then. Mm -hmm. um, I know Wendy was away for a time and then town meeting came around in elections. And mm -hmm. so sure. I'm just trying to figure out uh, where we're at. We did go out and have the survey done after speaking with the town attorney and just really want to know how you guys feel about it and if I should mm -hmm. keep moving forward or if it's something that we now don't want to do. Um, and again, it's not it's not land we need. It's just more if the town had the desire for the tower to be, you'd probably move it back about 30 feet from the cliff, which from below is pretty significant. So. What's on the tower now for items? Um, right now we have multiple tenants. We probably have, I would guess, five tenants uh, up there. And it, it ranges everything yep. from you know radio, cell, two-way, everything. Just communication yeah. stuff. Yeah. And um, And so you think the tower is at a certain age where it's, probably going to need to be replaced it's over 50 years old and it was yep. used when it went up oh i see um, yep and the regulations over the years change where like wind load calculations and sure. things have gotten stricter yep so we know that um tenants really can't upgrade much until the tower is replaced so typically they get ready for an upgrade and they say well now it's time to replace the tower and were, when were you going to make it higher um, we haven't talked about that, but I don't think so. I don't think zoning would allow us to make it any higher. Okay. Um, but so replacing the tower would be more structurally s sufficient than it is now. be a little bit more beefy, I imagine, Correct. than what's there beefy now. Beefy or a different design, how, whatever yep. they do to, right. to make it stronger. Yeah, it's just um, it's a lattice tower, and it's yep. old, rusty. Old. It's metal. So. And do you, f um, do you foresee when you replace that needing any further land, you'd be able to just replace it on what's there right now? We, we would have um, probably three options. We could either put it adjacent to where it is now, so on the same parcel, but still on the cliff. It kind of, the parcels kind of parallels the cliff. Okay. Um, we could also put it exactly where it is now, so that's the second option. It yep. just would re involve doing it twice. We'd have to build a temporary tower and then move gotcha. it there. Yep. And then the third option would be if the town wanted uh, we'd pick up the expense, but it could be moved back. Um, right. It's not, not too far, but probably 30 feet or so it could be moved yep. back. Um, and we spoke to the engineers, and they didn't see why that would be an issue. So. Okay. Um, Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, some time back when you first approached us, you know, we didn't really have an, an issue with it, but the more we had to think about it, we thought it would be in the best interest of the town uh, to lease you the land. And that way we would generate, you know, steady income from that, you know, if something that would be reasonable and you'd be generate, you know, you're generating income off of the thing and it would be shared with the community and we'd go that way without selling the land. Um, I think going forward, I put a small parcel of land 
it would be hard for us to put a, a, an accurate value on it, you know, being where it is and, and stuff like that. It, the value comes as to what it's being used for. You know, and that's kind of what before we said, well, we'd be really interested in talking with you to work out terms of a, a lease agreement. But, Right, and I, and, I, and I tried to clarify it, mainly because we don't need the land. Mm -hmm. From a business perspective, I mean, not that I don't want to help the town, but sure. it, it just doesn't it. make sense for us to, to get into a lease for something that we would then need for the next 100 years right. when we don't need it to begin with. So, um, you know, we get a little bit of the land back on the tax map if we, if we did buy it. Um, we cover that expense, and we wouldn't want to get it for for nothing. But you know, fair mm -hmm. market value plus a little bit. You mm -hmm. know, we we'd, we'd be willing to pay for it as long as it wasn't astronomical. So, right. Right. Um, and, and and I don't I don't want to push the issue. It's more. I just wanted to make sure since it'll be done now, and then it won't be touched for 50 years. And I grew up on Hillside, historic Deerfield. If it's a sore spot with people, and if it gave us a chance to push it back. Now's mm -hmm. the time to do it. Um, well, I guess that's really it. So. My opinion on it was if if um, if the only thing the town could gain out of this opportunity was uh, a better view of the mountain without the tower there, I'd be in favor of that. Um, not knowing what I mean, of course we you know many towns lease uh, land and towers go up and that's a, a, a generating income. Right doesn't look like that's an opportunity here since you can rebuild on what's there it's a unique situation because we we own the park you already own it right. yeah right. so um so if, if um if we were going to gain anything from the town it would be aesthetics and and so i'm inclined to that but um you know i'd, I'd leave it up to the other members or any other input from the community well you're pretty constrained um on the parcel that you do own, if you have a, a wider base? Well, we're constrained, but we'd be able to work within, the, within those constraints. Um, the engineers have told us we can do a similar design. Um, it doesn't have to be bigger. It just has to be new. Mm -hmm. um, another option is a pole tower, which is actually a much smaller footprint. So yep. I, I think that... I believe Eversource owns the other tower up there. They couldn't do a pole tower because they have a different technology they use. But oh, that's not, that doesn't affect um, cell services, for example. So a, a pole tower might be an option for us. Hmm. Right. I'd like to see a pole tower because it has a less of a footprint. Um. I think regardless of what type of tower, even if it's moved back, it's still going to be quite visible. It just won't be on the, that face quite yeah. as much. I mean, you're talking the distance of moving it back 35, 40 feet. And it's also, it's, you know, it, it realistically, it affects a handful of people that look at it every day. Um, if you're back going down 91, it's probably going to look very similar. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, 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 uh, how many people are, are really going to be concerned about it? I don't know. Right. I guess I'd be willing to do a sale if you could do a, you know, less of a fo footprint with a pole tower from an aesthetic point of view. Um, I don't know if you are interested in that kind of a negotiation. Well, it's, it's not, um, it doesn't matter to me what type of a tower goes up, but that's more of an engineering thing, so I can't speak to that until right. it's going to be replaced, which we don't have those exact plans now. Um, and I think it's a 50-50 because even though a lattice tower takes up a larger footprint, it doesn't, it's not necessarily as visible because it's not a solid object. Right. The pole towers yeah. are solid, so sometimes people would rather not see the pole towers. So mm -hmm. all I can say is that whatever limits we had to work with, we want to make it look as nice as it could. Sure. Um, we're, we're just not near that point yet. So. When do you foresee that? Like, so what, what would your next steps be if we would or wouldn't go ahead with So when the sale? we had, um, uh, when we first started with this and Wendy put me in touch with the attorney, it sounds like the basic steps are we do a survey, an appraisal, um, and then I don't know if you guys actually vote on it or not, but then it would have to go to town meeting right. to be des decided. So right. um, the survey's been done. Um, we would pay for the appraisal, but I think the town would want to 
own that process, um, right. you know, from a financial standpoint. And then if there's a special meeting or next annual town meeting, um, yeah. then the residents would decide. Now, as far as we're concerned, um, we've been approached by one tenant that is interested in replacing the tower, but we haven't gone any further with that. And those things can take a year or two. Mm -hmm. um, but if something came up rapidly and someone said, hey, we need to do this now, we'd be trying to help them do that as quickly as possible. So we'd want to have this in place because if, if it wasn't at that time, it would probably be too late. We couldn't put them off a year for town yeah. meeting when, right. when we need to get the other tower up. So. Um, I'm, <coughs> excuse me, I, I'm inclined to, uh, to, to lease the land. I, I think these leases can be valuable, and I think the, the, the appraisal on this land would not be very high at all. Um, it would only be a couple thousand dollars, I'm sure. Yeah, so... Because you're talking about very little f square footage. And, and some, of, some of these leases, you know, for tenant, you know, could be $2,000 a month. Um, I don't know. I, I understand that they can, you know, redo the one they have there, but um, I... And, and we're not, you know, the other yeah. tower, it's a different situation. You have Eversource, Verizon, AT&T. Right. And uh, Eversource owns the tower. This is a little different with a sure. small company owning the tower. Um, but some of these conversations that we have seem a bit candid, but this is our only time to talk about. No, it, so and I appreciate it. I'd rather know, be yeah. out in the open about yeah. it. Than, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I mean, I agree with you. It would be nice to have an uh, income stream versus, a, you know, a tiny bit of money. Um, but. And I, and I would want to be fair about it. I don't have any idea what an appraisal would be. Um, but it, let's say the appraisal was five thousand, um, I'd probably be willing to pay ten or fifteen just to make it fair. Um, you know how that equates to having a long-term lease. I don't know. And again, it just it wouldn't make sense for us no, I get to it. do the lease. So I get it. Um, try to make it work for both of us. But well, I, I would be interested in a smaller footprint mm -hmm. um, and no amazing. more extra height. So. Yeah, um, I don't think we can do it an extra height or you know, whatever. Right. That, so. so if you, it was the same height and a smaller footprint, that would be attractive to me. What, what kind of um, income do you generate off the tower now? I mean, that could be a, uh, that might be a personal question. Yeah, I'd rather, rather okay. not speak to that just because it's in the just and trying it, to, and it changes often. So and I'm trying to figure out what the value of the land is based on that. Right, so right. not that I want to know. Yeah. And the, put uh, your stuff out you know, in public. It's but. tough, too, because over the last... 10 years, it's just really dropped off. Cell, co cell companies have merged, so you take two tenants, now you have one. Ah, uh, gotcha. AT&T used to be in our tower, now they're on the other tower, so. I see. Um, and I think they'd probably rather be on the other tower because it's newer, <laughs> except that that tower's full as well, so they're uh, probably staying on ours. Huh. A lot of, a lot of variables. Well, what do you want to do? What do you want to tell Craig? Because I feel uh, bad that we're not giving him a concrete answer. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah. I, I would like to, to lease the land. Okay. I, I choose not to sell it, but I'm o I'm okay selling it if we're not going to get anything else out of it, and we we can gain some better visibility. But I mean, I'm, I'm I don't feel strongly either way. Sorry, I just sorry. um I just um. I mean, it doesn't appear that we're we're going to gain a lease out of it. So the only thing we could gain is aesthetics. Um, but again, I, I mean, I don't know if you need an answer today. Um, I don't need an answer today. I just, I just wouldn't want it to go too long. Right. And um, I really I, I think if I can, if, as far as the lease goes, there's just not a reason for us to do that. I understood. So if you knew that was the only way to go, then we would probably just end it now. Right. But if you still wanted to consider it, I have time. I mean, like I said, I've got money into the survey. Yeah. So I don't want to waste more money if it's not going to go anywhere. Of course. But, uh, we'll knowing in the next month or so. Would, right. Would certainly well, I think, it, it, so. I guess there was a, you know, if I could poll a few more people and think about this yeah. one more week, if, if it doesn't. And, you know, matter. let me just mention, and Diana brought this up, it's, you could, this is something you could have in ex discussion, in executive session, because mm -hmm. it's a sale, sale of real estate. estate. Right. You can. Okay. So if, that's so if it you gives us a little time to do this. Not right. With the person. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. So if you don't mind, 
another I, I would feel meeting. comfortable about that, just if, to, if that's all right with you. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Like I said, okay. either way is fine. I'm not trying to push the issue. I just want to know how to proceed. Yeah, that's right. fair. I understand. So. Great. Okay, all right. so all right. maybe I'll hear from you in a couple weeks. Yeah, a couple, I think our next meeting's in two weeks, or maybe a, yeah. at least a week. Yes. Yeah. Within a couple of weeks. Okay. Do you want to okay. wait to hear from Wendy or yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah. 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 yeah, right. She's got a lot going on, so give a call. Okay. All right. yeah. Sounds good. All right. Good to Thank see you, you again. Right. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you for, for coming, coming in. in. It'll be on an agenda. It, they'll be talking about it. Okay. Thank I'll you. let you know. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, we have uh, Mr. Mark Capadano in Colonial Power and Bob Armstrong to speak Oops. about electricity aggregation. Oh. Welcome, Mark. And your, energy energy folks. your energy committee folks are here. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. MA and David, do you want to come up too? Or do yeah. you want to? Okay. <laughs> the only MA if needed, David in here. you're close. <laughs> well, David's the chair of the committee. MA, yeah, you've been up. attending the, uh, have you been, has MA been no, part of the Franklin I County? Oh, okay. okay. Well, perfect. Thank you, Mark. So tell us a bit about the program and okay. we just, so we had a little. Mark Capitona, Colonial Power, uh, Five Mount Royal Ave, Marlboro Mass. Um, we're in front of you tonight to kind of explain municipal aggregation. You know what? Can you speak into the Yeah, slide that mic over a little bit. So yeah, that people can understand. We don't want people to miss what Understood. you're saying. Thank you. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah. that's better. Oh, Thank that's you. Much Thank better. Thank you. Um, so uh, we're here in front of you today uh, to, I guess, to answer some questions and kind of lay out the process. Um, by which we're going to embark on municipal aggregation. So um, we were chosen by uh, the Franklin County uh, as the agent for any communities participating in municipal aggregation. Uh, the, the process, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start uh, kind of at the beginning. We're talking about municipal aggregation, and this is on your supply portion of your Eversource bill, and we're talking about everyone that's on basic service, putting them on a a supply that the town chooses, whether that's long-term, green, whatever it might be, that's down the road, but once a contract is signed, people would be, and this is the point that I wanna make sure that everyone's hearing, is it's an opt-out municipal aggregation, meaning everyone would be enrolled in the program unless they did something to opt out. Real simple to do so, everyone gets a card, you go on the internet, a simple phone call to get out of the program. But just so everyone understands, we're talking about electricity on their Eversource uh, slash Wilmico electricity bill and just the supply portion. No changes to anything other than a single line item. So the, the process is fairly simple. Um, you've already taken kind of the most onerous step. You've already passed it at town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, after that, we need to hang a plan for uh, 15 business days after it's been hung. This, this board would need to approve that plan. After that plan is approved, it goes, we would have a consultation at the Department of Energy Resources. It's about a 15 minute phone call or so. They just go through the plan. Again, our plan has been approved some 70 odd times, so there's not really a lot of, once they know that you're with Colonial, it's pretty consistent. We've never had any problems at the Department of Energy Resources. After we get that consultation letter, we put together a filing and once that filing uh, is complete, we send it on to the Department of Public Utilities. At that point, there'll be a, a public hearing. After the public hearing, uh, they have them conveniently located in downtown Boston at, in their offices. Colonial will show up for you. You don't need to go yeah. there. Um, it literally takes about, uh, maybe it's five minutes. They open up the public hearing, anyone to speak for, anyone to speak against, and they close the public hearing. So it's, it's very quick. After that, we'll have a short, uh, probably say within a month or two, they'll start asking a few questions in which they call interrogatories. After those questions are answered, Colonial will answer those on your behalf. Once those are um, answered, there'll be another little break. There might be two, two or three more months, and we'll get out what they call an order. What is an order? Nothing more than your ability to go out in the marketplace and, and start to procure energy on behalf of the, the residents of Deerfield. That's kind of the... 101 version. What's the what's the benefit of doing this? Why why would this town be interested in so, moving forward with this? Absolutely. So the the benefits are numerous. Right off the bat, you're no longer uh, subject. You get to choose kind of 
how you want your energy mix. So if you wanted to something to do, be a little bit greener, mm -hmm. you could do so. If you didn't want to um, have those kind of whipsaw rates that you're kind of seeing here, every winter the rate is high, and, and, and then every summer it, 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 it comes down. Every six months it's up and down. You could do a three-year term. You could do a two-year term. It's really up to you what you want and when you want it. And from my standpoint, the, the current utility isn't using the market to your advantage. All the department is set up. You have to go out every six months and procure energy on behalf. You get 50% of, um, of your needs. This is what they tell a utility, and they buy. Re re regardless if the market is up or down, they just follow the process because they have no skin in the game. This can be quite differently. It can be run however we decide to, to move forward. So you could buy, you know, you know uh, on the original contract, you could say, okay, we're going to buy 100% of our needs for the next year and a half, but we're also going to buy 50% of our needs for a year um, or the next six months and the next 12 months after that. And then ladder in other purchases along the way when that happens. So it's truly um, energy by the people for the people. It, you get to decide with our, with our, you know, our, our guidance. Mm -hmm. Mark, does it for residential and commercial? So every all the occupants of the community. Correct? Every, everyone's eligible for it, yeah. but people that are already on a supply, yeah. they wouldn't be mailed to. We wouldn't switch them. Right. But they could join the program if they wanted to. How about someone who deals with uh, EverSource, but they have solar on their house where they get money back? How would that affect them? It, so it doesn't affect them. There's no effect okay. on them other than it's a little bit more. Um, I don't really want to say this. It's a little bit more robust, so it, the knife cuts both ways. So yep. the utility is always going to pay if you're in, in a net metering uh, situation. They're always going to pay basic service. I'm just going to run through a quick scenario. So let's just say basic service was $0.10. Cents. Yep. Uh, the town's rate was $0.09. Cents. Yep. That person would be paying $0.09, cents, but the credit would be 10 Win-win, right. Right? right? But let's just say in the summertime the rate went down to uh, $0.08. Cents. Yep. They, they would be paying 9 but only be getting credited the $0.08. Eight cents. Cents. So it, it's a it, you know uh, sure. it's one of those things they need to watch, okay. but it has no effect if they don't do anything. Right. They'd automatically be enrolled. They still use the same KWH. How does it affect the the town of Deerfield where we have outside aggregation and we also get I'm not sure the terminology credits from uh, solar uh, fields in our community. It, it, it wouldn't have any does, effect does on that if, if the if you decided to participate. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you already have your con your municipal buildings out in the contract. Yes, sir. It would stay on that uh, if you do. Yep. It would stay on that contract until yep. done. Then then you'd have a decision like everyone else. Do we want to join the aggregation or do we want to go back out to the bid on our on, own? On an average, what would the homeowner save? Uh, I mean, not I know because bills fluctuate, but per kilowatt hour, I mean. So, so it really depends on uh, first on color, like. Uh, as far as that is, Mix. how clean do you want the energy to be? Right. What's your term? Are you trying to stabilize rates? Are you trying to, but if you're going to do, so the city of Marlboro does, they're probably saving somewhere in the range of a half a penny. They do a basic service model. That's every six months they go out to bid. Yep. Starts to get a little bit onerous, but that's one of the things that they want to do. Mm -hmm. They just try to um, time the market a little bit. Every Got six it. months they go out to bid. They probably save about a, around a half a penny mm -hmm. compared to basic service. They're a national grid community. They're not a Wilmico community, yeah. just so you know. And, yeah. and this opt-out option, is there a time period that you have to opt out in, or is it something you could just kind of go along with and after six months opt out or a year opt out or whatever? Yeah, so, so the way the plan is set up, yeah. it, it's an, an endless opt-in and opt-out okay. scenario. So right. I, can, I can just say, yeah, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm not happy with it for some reason. Opt-out. Yep. For whatever reason, six months later you want to opt-in, you can opt-in. Free opt-in, opt-out. Great. That's good. No, no fees or penalties for it. Yeah. And, and Eversource doesn't penalize us for, like, service response or anything like that if we're, a, a, you know, a colonial power company? No, community? No, no, not at all, because Eversource doesn't make any money off the supply portion of it. They don't even know if you're on competitive supply or not. Okay. So, so. they're indifferent to aggregation. Okay. Do you have thoughts, David? Well, I just put the microphone to you. Oh, yes, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry about that. For the public, I don't know how far along you guys are, but I have a, a need to kind of back up and give the basic Thank idea you. of what aggregation That'd is, be great. as yep. I understand it. And you can feel free to <laughs> <laughs> no steer me the right way, but 10 years ago or so, the state deregulated so that 
individuals had the power to go choose their own source of the supply of their electricity. And the idea of that was that individuals would create competition, but individuals, especially individuals acting without much knowledge of what other people are doing, can't really create a competitive market because they're just Too little. signing up. Yeah. So <clears throat> what I see aggregation as doing is kind of creating a buyer's club where we get to pick among the sources that are available from that deregulation and try to steer things to be more favorable. You know, much the way they're talking about the federal government doesn't bargain enough on Medicaid and, and right. pharmacy, pharmaceuticals. Why not sort of have a buyer's club for electricity? And the secondary um, effect of this is it, it actually it may be the primary effect is less about just going after savings but kind of trying to steer what kind of sources we're using mm -hmm. so that it, that's where I think we're talking about different price ranges according to how green the source you know you can sort of get into very esoteric definitions of what's green and what isn't, but other towns that we've talked to have said that the biggest gain they see in doing this is in the, the greening of their source, as opposed to looking at it as a strictly money-making thing. But they, they've done all right on money, but it, it is up to us to try to steer toward uh, a, sustain, a more sustainable future, too. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the backup. Thank you. Now, I, I, I agree with a lot of what you said. My position sometimes is very, I try to look out for, you know, if you will, the small folks. It's like, you know, I'm not saying this, but like, yeah, I, I think this is a good idea, so let's make a rule everybody in Deerfield has to have a Tesla. Nobody can burn gasoline in town, you know. But with this program, what's nice about it is if the majority of the community decides to get a lot of their electricity from green sources, but it costs just a little bit more, if there were other people who couldn't afford that or didn't want it, then they can opt out of this. So mm -hmm. it, it's a win-win situation. I and think. most... <clears throat> got peanut shells here. <laughs> Most of those people would still do better under yeah. this program. I believe so. Yeah. Well, answer my so questions. is there any downside to this? I, I just remember the experience in Greenfield. Remember with the billing and all that kind of stuff? That was kind of messy. People were freaking out, actually. <laughs> um, as far as I know, they, they worked it out. They did encounter administrative hurdles that they had to expect. It. And I think we can, one of the beauties of what we're trying to do with the, it's coordinated by FERCOG, I think, um, is to have many local communities working together to make this as smooth a transition as possible. So um, how many other communities right now have bought into it? Um, I know the FERCOG listing here. Right, so, oh, six, seven, so we have signed contracts to move forward in Northfield, Buckland, Conway, Shelburne, Coleraine, Charlemont, New Salem, and Warwick. We were also in front of Sutherland who voted to move forward and Waitley who voted to move forward. They haven't signed the contracts though. They were missing select board members at the meeting. Um, we're in front of, um, let me see, Huntington has the, um, just due to timing and meeting dates, they have their plan posted. Um, we're out there the week after next. Um, same thing with Gill. So you're working outside of Franklin <coughs> County in this group as well? Huntington asked, to, uh, asked okay. to join. Okay. So, so they're not they on the list that we have. Yes, and okay. they contacted Bob and um, they took a town meeting vote, so they're just they're moving at the same pace as the other towns. Right. And, and Mark, you did say earlier that the billing will still come from EverSource. It's just the supply. There will be a different name associated with the supplier. So correct. the billing thing should not be an issue because no. it'll yeah. Now, you know right? I mean? yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. 
and I don't want to say it's a different aggregator. I don't think they. That was the first of, of uh, their first foray into I it. So I think they had a little, yeah. little yep. snafu. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm I happy like to this. move forward. I, yeah. I, I like this. Yeah. The, I guess my my only last question is: uh, Are there other people, other companies like Colonial Power that do this, and how do your your rates differ from theirs? Uh, so our rate is actually identical to their rates. Um, we've been doing this the longest. We have okay. a large aggregation in Massachusetts, and our rate is point zero zero one, one tenth of a penny or a mill is what we call it. Yep. Yep. Their rates are the same as ours. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. I think it's a good idea. So I, I make a motion to um, sign the um, consultant agreement for management of the town's municipal aggregation program and injury related services. Um, I will second that. Is there any further discussion? Um, nope. I just think we have to. We have to. We have a is vote there some way signature. to put this on the website so people understand? What's yeah, we happening? can. We, I'm sure yeah. we can. The whole public process. Is yeah, there? there'll yeah. be. A, yeah, we we'll get that all nailed we out. We have an outline of the steps here, and I can send over an electronic copy so that'd you can post that. Oh, that'd we'll be great. So after the contract is signed, we'll, like Mark said, we'll send over the aggregation plan itself. It's about yep. 12 pages. Okay. Um, that gets posted on the website with some corresponding language about public review and comment. It has to be posted for 15 business days. Public can comment, um, mm -hmm. send okay. in comments, email Good. comments. Um, those comments will go in the filing to the DPU so the DPU can see who commented and what they had to say. Mm -hmm. All right. um, so that will get posted. Um, as we move further in the process, when we do get to a supply piece, we have numerous education materials that we can, we have FAQs, we can send those now, you can post those now if you want to get those out there. Just, you know, general aggregation questions, what is aggregation, what's happening? I, I think can, that would be good because it's, I think people remember what happened in Greenfield and I, I, you know, I don't want people to think that that's... Yeah. We're voting for that kind of The thing we try chaos. to stay away from is educate people on aggregation now so they know that it's coming, but it's going to be a, probably about a nine-month process at the mm -hmm. DPU. Yeah, no, that's so good. people will lose it between now and then, so yep. we try to wait on the, the specifics of the supply until we get there, So because you're just going to have to re-educate everybody in nine months. Well, if, um, it, but if it's posted on the website, then yes. people, people can right. have, have a chance to get yes, used to absolutely. it. Absolutely. Okay, we have a motion before us. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I wanted to mention one thing while, while David's here, and I wanted to thank him so much for his work on our Green Communities Grant. Um, Deerfield um, was awarded a Green Communities Grant that um, David and the, and the Energy Committee put together, and along with help from vendors, and um, just really quickly. <laughs> and you did a fantastic job, and I'm re really proud of you guys, and uh, very happy for Deerfield. So, I. I <laughs> I just want to say it was a stroke of work at the last minute, but it certainly paid off. So thank you very it much. A long shot, you know. Thanks, Bob Lesko, especially. Yes, it's a big help in that. So we're going to have some. It's a great work at the element. This is a lot of this to be done at the elementary school: condensing boilers, LED lighting, fresh air dampener improvements, fresh air economizer repair, faucet aerators, refrigerator door repair, administrative costs. So really good stuff. So great boilers. That boiler. boiler, yeah, that's going to make a huge difference. That's a huge thing. So, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to explain it to us too. Great. Okay, excellent. All right, awesome. Thank you. Um, I think we should just take a second to say that we also got a ten thousand four hundred and twenty-three dollar grant for um, additional housing at repair. Oh, great. And that was, um, you know, towards so rehab. We should have put in a plug for that program as well, because I understand they're they're having difficulty in finding application in, in approving applications for that yeah. program. Um, I will put something together for a future meeting that we can announce you know, and put it up people, on the website. It could be as simple as door jam repair or some insulation, anything like that. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think it's their responsibility to be um, promoting this program, but we will help do that with them. So. Yep. I agree. We have agendas up here for anybody who's interested. What's that? I think Kip, the top page. I was going to say, oh. Kip needs an agenda. Do you need an agenda? Oh, no, oh, I have an agenda. Oh, I just, oh it's okay. I, I, just the need the, I just need the signature page. Right I just looked at the three and I was like, what the heck? Okay. <laughs> well,
Yeah. It's here. It's all here. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Deerfield Naturals uh, Marijuana Establishment. If, uh, anybody from Deerfield Naturals want to come up and chat? Or do you... Oh, okay. okay, that's fine. Uh, we'll swap them, sure. We can do that. All right. The folks from Sun Mass Incorporated here, would you like to come up? Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. Hello, you? Joe. Good. A little rainy. Yes. Nasty weather. <laughs> right. But you bring the sun. <laughs> so I appreciate this time this evening, and I wanted to share some updates on uh, where we're headed. Um, my name is Joe Kachuri. I'm with Sons Mass. Um, and to inform, just to update, we're scheduled to do a community uh, outreach um, middle of August, and that'll be held in this room where we're just initiating our um, publications now. Do you so, have an actual date, Joe? A 14th. 14th, okay. Yes. At what time? 7, 7, 7 p.m. Okay. And to uh, share some insights, um, on maybe some of how we're looking at doing this. We have, there's two sides. We have a cultivation, we have a dispensary. So just to break this down briefly, um, that cultivation, if we both started a cultivation dispensary on the same day, let's just, just uh, kind of talk about if we went through the process and we were approved all at one time, the dispensary would have to sit un unopened maybe for a year. Depends how you cultivate. But for us, we, we're, we're moving forward, but we're starting with some engineers. But it would take, upon approval, we would have to uh, revamp, construct, develop out, and t take that to what we're gonna do is called a light deprivation building. We're gonna use the existing greenhouse, and then we're gonna bring in some lights, and we'll do different things to it. And then once you start that process to get to a cultivate and have medicine to put on a shelf, it's a year. Right. Maybe, and it depends, I mean, how things are with the construction. Because we're starting some engineer work, but, it but what I'm trying to get to is, is there a way that maybe we can, like I know there's some, uh, with dispensary that's a, a topic of itself and then the cultivation's a topic. Mm -hmm. Can we, have like separate conversations by because the cultivation is going to take time and yep. if we all opened and we were whoever is successful with the dispensary they can't open I mean unless unless you're buying product from elsewhere but if you're going to grow it yourself um, I did just so what I was thinking if we can have maybe a separate conversation one for cultivation one for dispensary we go down the road but maybe if we can somehow streamline the cultivation mm -hmm. on some level and proceed there. I also have some numbers that I wanted to share okay. that I put together a little spreadsheet and I'd be happy to share these. So for us, Sun's Mass, we're looking at approximately, and again, these are approximate numbers, so I don't want to be held to this, approximately about 100,000 square foot of, of what, we, what we call canopy. That's the grow area. The building could be bigger. So we're thinking the range will be between 15, 2,000 pounds a month, give or take. So I'm gonna use 17,500, that means 1,750 pounds per month of what we can cultivate now that's going to take 18 months. I just want to be very clear. Maybe 20 months from now. Right. When assuming you're we get the green light to go. And that was how, how many pounds a month? You said it'll be about 1,750. So you're talking about 21,000 a year, approximately. Give or take. Yeah. Give okay. Or take. And um, so, what the wholesale market is, and and there's variables. 
So I'm going to be conservative with my number. <laughs> now, there might be some people that might say that's different, but, and I'm open for that discussion, but say 3,000 a pound. What would it cost all labor, materials, lights? Again, these are numbers that people can, we can, but I'm going to be conservative. About a thousand pounds, about a thousand dollars a pound. So there's about two thousand dollars a pound of net, give or take. If we do that, and we offer the city a percentage of that, we're thinking about a percent, a point and a half percent. I'm looking at about fifty plus thousand a month to the city. Um, That's about six hundred thousand a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now again, these are. Give or takes, I can't be held to this, but what I'm trying to say to the point of this is we have to, it, there's a period of time before all of this can come together. Right. The dispensary is, on some degree, a little easier. It's a retail store. Yep. You're just putting your wares, your, your medicine in, whatever the medicine is. You know, and there's a lot of, I don't know if you saw the article today in the Wall Street Journal. And they were talking about how the vape pens and how the edibles are becoming more the mainstream than what they used to call the flower, which was the, the what you would burn. Yeah. All right, so it's going this way because it's healthier, actually. So whatever you put on the shelf, you, you know, you just build a retail. And, but the cultivation's complicated. Mm -hmm. And there's, it's, there's a level of sophistication there that I'm asking, can we somehow have two paths and we can maybe move quicker with the cultivation because it will take time. And that's all I'm asking from, from, from this standard. Now, we want to go down the path with both. We want the dispensary and we'll have that discussion and I know there's, there's someone else and we can have that discussion. And I think with the city, the city is open to having the cultivation. But I try to give you some numbers here of you know, we could help the city that we can, we're putting that all of branch out, so to speak. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Uh, just, and I hope I explain this properly. We can go down that path. I don't think that we have a problem. But we uh, can have 10 cultivators in the community, but only one retailer. So if we choose, you choose, or however, together we choose for everybody's Safe to go down the path quicker to get cultivators. We have multiple cultivators. There still might only be one retail. So that's. But that's why we had right. separate host agreements, so no. we could. Right. I, I just put. I, I get would the cultivation hate, going. I, I don't just say, but if if say s someone, we'll see, Joe. If these people decide to get going and and uh, you know they want to move forward and get their cultivating set. All of a sudden, they find out that they're not going to be the retail operator. How does that affect? Oh, I can answer that. You know what I'm saying? It's a fair question. Yeah. Fair question. We have other locations, as well as you're allowed to sell in the wholesale market. Mm -hmm. Right. So there will be a certain, there are some people that will not cultivate in the state. There will, and I don't know what that percentage is, right. but, but there, there is a level of sophistication with this, because it's, sure. it's a sensitive, um, I'm not a botanist, so I can't speak on that level. But I have been in the cultivations. I have met with the botanist. I've met with our PhD chemist. You know, this is a level of science. And there are people that just don't want to go there. They would rather just to have a dispensary. Mm -hmm. So where we, we would not put in that type of rep money, and that expenditure, which is, it's, it's not cheap. Mm -hmm. And that manpower and time, if we didn't think we had Enough a place business, for it right. to go. Right. We wouldn't do that. Regardless it's been pre-calculated it no. and predetermined um, on how this would be dispersed in the state. Right. I just, and I said it earlier, but you know, this board doesn't have the luxury of sitting around talking about different things. We have to do it right here. So sometimes we have to ask questions. And if it seems like we're kind of just stumbling through it, it's because it is we new are. to us. <laughs> and we are. We're not only we're new to it, but we don't get a chance to sit like you folks do. You get to sit down and say, well, this and this, we can do that or we can do that. We don't, we don't do that. You know, we have to just lay it all out right here. And yep. sometimes we're going to look at each other and go, what are you thinking? But, you know, right. this is the way our process has to work. So yep. By all means, please you know. ask any question because yep. they're, okay. they're all relevant. Well, so my um, I just wanted to be clear that um, we, 
we wanted the separate host agreements so we could separate cultivation from dispensary. Yeah. But I wanted to be upfront that um, we really don't have the opportunity for um, product manufacturing at this point um, because our zone, our zoning allowed for that in the Oxford Pickle area in the center of town. And it looks like there's not going to be any space there. So um, the I don't know. The closing was today. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I don't know if you were planning on doing the actual manufacturing somewhere in town. Well, it was a concept, it was a thought, but that's not, that won't deter us. Okay, gotcha. okay, because yep. I wanted to be up front. That no, and I appreciate looked, that. Thank you so much. The okay. zoning, Thank you, you know, the, our current zoning doesn't allow for that. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm very in favor of doing multiple paths. I mean, that just seems Excellent. like it makes sense to, sure to get started on one, you know, Yep. Started on one one aspect of the business while the other one still is whatever the other other items other obstacles they are two different businesses really I mean obviously they have the same yeah. uh, product but um, very different businesses so um, I was trying to reconcile your host agreement with the um, model from our lawyer and then ones from um, Lester and um, they're a little bit different. So how how do you want to do this? Do you want to? Well, I think I think aside from just laying that out, I think we'll need to discuss exactly what we want in a host agreement for each aspect of the business, and then and we can have that discussion uh, not with them but just between us um, today or or another day. But um, as we okay. kind of work through that, and then have a host agreement out for anybody that wants it and it's the same for every right company. I, I, I tend I feel pretty strongly about having a, an agreement that our lawyer drew mm -hmm. uh, but I think that you know we should uh, collectively uh, look at all of the different things and you know even though we're not experts at this we can pick and choose the things that we think are important and then to we our community say, you know I can try to make my argument why I think this is good and mm -hmm. you can do the same in Carolyn and, and then we can make a consensus and send it back to our lawyer and have them draft that agreement uh, with all the, and then well, also rely on the, the attorneys to say you know can you know. we can we post a, a meeting for next Wednesday to discuss this with our attorney well do you, I think frankly you want to come to terms you know you want to talk about what the terms are that you agree about and well then the rest of it is kind of boilerplate well, Stuff. almost and at this point, as these get developed around the state, yeah, using I mean, similar models, I think. So. Yeah, I mean, most of the st the money is what is is up in the air, mm -hmm. and if that's Joe's we, offer is you what were we offering. were you were offering what we were ballparking, so or at least I had thought of as a ballpark number, um, actually more generous. So. Um, I'm, I'm on board just, with this. Could I just get clarification again? You were thinking of uh, uh, like a 1.5 of the percent cultivation. of your cultivation, cultivation. Yes. and you were roughly figuring 1750 pounds a month, roughly, at once and, it's and, up yeah, and, and running. And, once so, it's, and, it, and there, I know you could have a good crop, you could have a bad that's crop. Correct. You, know, yeah. just, you never know what's going to happen. Right. That's, that's correct. So yeah. th these are estimates of that course. we have done, and, and I, and actually, um, David Julian is our, one of our attorneys from Vicente who's here. We can speak about that briefly, but I, we, we had a conversation with our head cultivator. We had a conversation with the gentleman that is our chemist to mm -hmm. try to, so these, these were Zero thought through, yep. but of course, you know, because they're, it's cultivation, mm -hmm. you know, you do the best you can. You do. But I, if we, if this is amenable and, and. Um, we can come to an agreement, and I'll let David handle all of that uh, legal documents, mm -hmm. but we would like to see if we can move forward With and the then get to our, complete that, to work for our non-opposition uh, mm -hmm. letter so we can start moving forward. And then we can have as long of a discussion like with the dispensary, because we actually have, in our opinion, and now this is our opinion, mm -hmm. which may not be with others, we have time. But we want to move forward with the dispensary. It's just that you, you, there's timing involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, well, I'm supportive of that. That was yeah. why I was suggesting we get move forward mm -hmm. for next week. Right. Okay. I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. Okay. Good. Yeah. So, I yes, sir. I was going to say that I represent Mr. Blow, 
would like to make a proposal also to the board. We assume we, that the board was going to come up with a host agreement mm -hmm. with some numbers. Yep. But we have numbers also. Yeah. We think are going to be more favorable to the town. That's yeah. true. And, and we, you know, numbers. We, you were first on our agenda, but you weren't here, so we just decided we'll speak with these gentlemen, and uh, then we'll speak with you. And we're not making any decisions tonight. We're just taking, gathering information. And we can so. have multiple host agreements. Yes. That, was, that was why the right. purpose. Right. Well, we only have one established. Correct. Right. right. But Correct. we can, we can have, have cultivation. Multiple, multiple cultivation, cultivation ones. And we feel comfortable with doing that. Yeah. Right. But in terms of well-explained, when you get to us. Yeah, sure. Right. It's not a standalone, it's different actually. Right. So we're going to do them both on the same site. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That was my recollection of your last visit. Okay. So, okay. so is there anything else? Um, we'll uh, try to get with our lawyer for next week. Perfect. And um, come and back we, with some kind of, um, I guess, we'll come up with a master host agreement. That's fine. That's my recollections. We would do that okay. for cultivation and then because one we for have, we both. have several different models and we've highlighted the things that we were interested in. Mm -hmm. I think the, you did ask me earlier in the meeting about getting feedback from the attorney. They sent all of them um, and gave sent back with those conditions that were not specific to uh, costs and exchange of money or mm -hmm. percentages or anything, just simply kind of boilerplate and protections and ideas to consider, as well as a comment about having a clause in there. I don't know if it's in there or it was in the email cover that she sent about, um, you know, how uh, we do not, um, people owe taxes or mm -hmm. fees on something, we do not renew their licenses, and right. that would yep. be applicable as well for Yep. These situations, um, but, and, and those we, are the kind can, of things we want to make sure we add in. We can talk about all of those things, and we'll each of us, if we make out a list, then through our our minutes, uh, you know, we can submit those to the attorney and let them do the, their thing. So okay. Yeah, just, yeah. I mean, are you okay with that? Because it's your decision. I, you know, right. how you want to do it. I think well, that's the best I, way. I, yeah. I mean, going through this, there's several different things that we liked. That we wanted to make in a and master one. And there's also one. multiple other host yeah. agreements that are around the state. At. Yeah. So, okay. if we are able to discuss that in an executive session, then we can just put them all together. Okay. We could possibly do that next week as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So could we? I mean, can we get? No. Can we get yeah, Katie right. to come? No. No. I don't no think again, we, we can't. We, we won't can't do that in the executive, executive session. session. Sorry. No. You can't. You no. can't discuss a contract in the executive no. session. I don't, not for okay. this, no. Oh, well, no. We, that's right. We can d just do that. I mean, yeah. like as long as we both we'll get what it, we'll we all have our list and we'll right, talk we'll about it one yeah, at that's a time. What it, you to okay, do. Just you say what it make is a you list. Yep. We'll give it to you, and you'll then you'll it run together. it by the lawyer, yeah. exactly. and then we'll review it, mm -hmm. and then we'll have it for you. By or hopefully. anybody. Yeah, for anybody. That will be our like agreement, host agreement. And I think in in parting here. Um, because I was asking if we can separate because of timing, we have, you know, I'm thinking winter, to be honest with you, um, for construction, for development, and what we're going to do over there, and permitting, and, and just the timing. With the dispensary, with the, with the uh, um, host agreement, you know, the percentages, we could have a different discussion on there. Mm -hmm. That could be much more favorable in percentages numbers. Mm -hmm. So I was just really, because I'm trying to, one just, they're very different to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we go into, not, not to belabor this point, when you go into many states and they have what is called a competitive bid application process, they usually have about six months that they put out the uh, cultivation first and then they award. Six months even longer is when they award the dispensaries because that's the lag time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just trying to make a point that okay. if we can do that, but we'll be happy to have that discussion I'm sure it will be favorable to, to the city, but I was just trying to make, uh, and, and we'll make ourselves available when, that, when needed. Okay. So I'm just curious, do you know, if there are currently medical marijuana establishments in the Commonwealth, do they import all of that? Or is no, you it can't, cultivated? You can't cross state line. You can't. So 
Uh, just to clarify, mm -hmm. uh, Massachusetts requires vertical integration for medical marijuana, which means you need to cultivate, manufacture, and dispense your own product. From uh, seed, right? right um, through. They, do al they do allow from clones now. Oh, okay. So, uh, yep. Initially, it was just seed. Right. Now you can start from clones if they're below a certain size, but typically that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing, although you are allowed to wholesale medical from other places, but only up to a certain percentage of your inventory. Gotcha. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And I just, I just want to also add is that um, I'm happy to work with your council. You know, we do this all over the state. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, please let me know how I can help and um, if there's any particular provisions you'd like to talk about or, or any specific language that you're interested in, you know, I'm happy to help move this process along. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good Thank night. You. Have a good night. Thank you. Yes, sir. You're on board. Folks from Deerfield Naturals. When I was here on Wednesday, uh, the Board of Health hearing, my understanding was that you're going to be meeting with council, you're going to come up with a post community agreement. A model one, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yes. Therefore, I indicated I wasn't going to submit one with the right. numbers. Correct. Correct. If you were going to come up with one, it appears now that you're thinking of entertaining host community agreements, and so we're happy to submit one with new numbers. And you say that you would approve two host community agreements. That places you in a strange position because by your bylaws, you can only have one establishment. Oh, Correct. Right. But we can have multiple cultivation. You can we, have multiple cultivation. That's so right. You, right. So in terms of a host community agreement for retail. Right. We, we that would be asked, separate. Um, Sun Mass Inc. had submitted, uh, we had asked for separate Correct, and, I and, and I would, we would submit separate ones, one yes. for medical marijuana, right. one for recreational marijuana, and right. one for, for cultivation. cultivation. Yeah, right. right. So that's very is, it your, is it what you're saying, we're going to come back next Wednesday, we're going to uh, have... No. That's, that's not what we mean. What, what we've decided, we meet every other week, but we've decided to come next Wednesday for us just to meet without anybody. I mean, it's a public meeting. You're okay. welcome to come. But it's just for us to talk about it. Fine. And we're How still going to have our attorney uh, draft the host agreement. If you want to submit something, you know, that you think is favorable, you know, we're more than happy to look at all the information. Uh, you know, between the three of us, we're going to look at most of what we understand and make a list and put it together and send it off to our attorney saying, look, this is what we'd like to see in the agreement, uh, you know, using the model that they've already submitted to us and let them compile it. I don't think it would take well, a we long had, time. Well, we had Sons Agreement. We right. had the town of Leicester. We have the Salem. And what other right. towns did you have? Danvers and just different yeah. just stuff looking around. We had three or what, four different ones. Sure. Plus, we have the, the model country. from, um, you know, that our lawyer generated. She represents, I don't know, a few communities. That so on the, this. The, you don't have any number of others from Waitley and right. other yes. towns. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what we were doing was pulling out things that we liked or wanted and that we would send back to her, um, our attorney, to incorporate in her basic one. And that would be... And there would be, so there would be a cultivation one that would be uniform mm -hmm. for anybody that came along. There would be a retail, retail one. And a medical. And the, a medical dispensary one. Um, but we, uh, our manufacturer, I, the way we did our zoning, the manufacturing is not is off the table at the moment. Why is that? Because it's, um, manufacturing is supposed to be happening in the Oxford Pickle area. Ex expedited permitting. Expedited, oh. expedited I, I, um, permitting. Wasn't it also in that, I think it was in the same area as. Um, was it down there? Yeah, I think it was oh, there okay. as well. Oh, yeah. okay. Anyway, so. we were not considering that at the moment. But that it is, it, is, it can't happen in the expedited permitting district, but it can happen in the, the C 
uh, one area that... Uh, this is the overlay district? The overlay district, okay. I'm sorry, yes. All right. Uh, then but to answer your question, still, we're only, we'll only consider one retail establishment. Um, I th Well, our zoning area only provides... Uh, permits for one, one in that area. Right. So of proximity is, is of there some... Have you thought about when you'll have both applicants say why they should be that mm -hmm. one and um, then at some point you will make your determination based on any number of factors. factors. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how soon we do that. Hopefully I would say within two weeks we should have the agreements squared away. I don't know. There's a, I, I, um, Since we only have the choice of one, we want to make sure we pick the correct one. So, I mean, I, I, the cultivation to me is straightforward. Anybody that wants to grow in our, we should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I don't want to give like a two-week time frame on the dispensary oh, host no. agreement because I'm not sure. No, and I, I, I we're not suggesting you do. I suggesting right. yeah. you do that one and you do that one right. Right. Correct. Right. And both applicants have a chance to present their case. Right. Absolutely. You know, with the same I, I, meeting, whether it be yeah. a half an hour or an hour. Absolutely. Right. To explain yeah. why you should choose them. Correct. Yes. You that know, is absolutely then, correct. And then you might make a decision that meeting, or you might put it off. Wait a week. Like, right. Yeah. You know. We we, I just want to do more research still on yeah. that. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I understand sort of where we are going yep. forward. Yep. It's, it's partly awkward because we have no opportunity to talk except in a public meeting. So, um, you know, it sounds like we don't really, are not very organized, but we're trying we to be organized. don't have much organized. time to organize. Can, can, <laughs> I ask a, can I ask a question out um, sure. on the cultivation side? So based on um, uh, what Joe or Sun came up with, and if that's agreeable to you, is that what you're saying? Is that you would then model the host agreement based on something that's acceptable, and then we would be able to receive that um, to put an application in for the host mm -hmm. agreement within. And you're saying maybe within two weeks you'll meet next week and for the cultivation part. Yeah, for yes. the cultivation. Yes. Sure. right. Because then you and guys the can get started. The cultivation takes so much more time. Yes. as he was saying to right. do the build out. If you were optimistically six months to do the buildup before you're growing, it's not going to happen in yeah. six months. It's right. going to take longer. And you have to already get from the state right. before you do that. Right. Exactly. Right. And That's seeing why as we're there's, trying to if be there's helpful. multiple ones, we have to also go not just from the host agreement, but then you have to go for a special permit. So there's right. actually. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. Yep. If it would be uh, 12 to 18 months from right. when the host agreement would be. I right. Guess, um, yeah, negotiated yeah, by then, realistically, right now, for the medical marijuana, you apply to the Department of Public Health. Yes. And for the recreational, you apply to the Cannabis Control Commission. But by December 31 of Correct. this year, there will be to combine to be, to, there, together. That's the, right. The yeah. Department of Public Health is going to be out of the process. Right. That's right. right. Yep. So our, our our thoughts were to help cultivation get started because that's obviously. You know, you need product, and that takes a much longer to do. So, our thought was to and move that's pretty straightforward. With, and those would be separate host agreements, and then you would, then obviously, like you said, we'd have the two companies that have come forward uh, present to us why they would be the best choice for Deerfield, and then we could make a decision after that. But in this in this public time that we could kind of hammer out what we've seen and what we've liked in host agreements for both, mainly for. It's it's mainly f I mean the cultivation feel I feel is pretty straightforward but it's mainly the retail um, and medical that we need to hammer out that detail and then we'd have a and, and then obviously entertain from companies what they'd want to put forward. You think they would be different? Uh, re I think cultivation would be the same, but depending on what what companies offer, they may be different. I mean I I think we it would be what we would want would probably be the same. What you provide might be different. That's just a negotiating thing, I assume. At, at some point, are you going to say, this is what we'd like to see in a host community agreement? Yes. Obviously, yes. the terms, but also we'd like to see these numbers. Yes. Correct. Yeah. That's, you know, that's we, what we're hoping to get like, to within like to a couple of weeks. 3% at X, Y, and Z. Yes. Correct. Yep. And I also feel, again, that even though it's cultivation, there still is a cost 
to our community for educational outreach. And so that we have not figured out how we're going to incorporate that in the cultivation part, but it should be a small sidebar at least mm -hmm. because that's very important to me. And then there's cultivation, obviously, of two types. There's cultivation for the retail, which goes into the retail, which then gets taxed. Mm -hmm. But conceivably, one could cultivate and sell that to another dispenser. Correct. Correct. Yep. So that's another thing that you should be considering, mm -hmm. whether you treat those differently, and you might well choose to do that. Some towns have. Yep. Yep. So just so I'm clear, next Wednesday you're going to be talking among yourselves, working on the host community well, agreement. Well, what we're going to do special meeting. I don't know if you want to add more to the agenda. Yeah. Well, what we're going to do is, I th I think it's very important to move ahead. So. Um, and commit because we're just dragging our feet. So, and people have obviously have their interests. So, we should be able to look at all these examples and compile whatever we feel we want in the host agreement together and then forward that to Lisa because Lisa, I think, is going to be here. We can give that to her and talk with her and then um, she can give us a final draft within a few days our final thing for us to vote on right. that will incorporate the things that we th feel is important. Okay. I'm, I'm actually just trying to figure out my vacation schedule. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's important. Well, we have a regular scheduled meeting. When's our next regu Two regular? Weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. It's on August 8th. So I would assume that we would have a decision by August 8th that we could vote a final Post agreement for, for cultivation. For, for cultivation. And then perhaps two weeks after that, which would be mm. the 22nd, yeah. would be when we might at least make initial presentations to yeah. you on the recreational side? Um, yeah, that would be after Sun does their public outreach on the 14th. I, I, I'm just hesitating to commit because I'm not sure how much more research we need to mm -hmm. do. Um, that, that, that's fine. Yeah. I, I'm just, yeah. if it's not. I mean, it, I'm just being upfront. No, that that's I'm, fine. And I'm, if it's 22nd, actually be here. And it, okay. then I'll be, then it will be the 5th of September afterwards. Right. And Did, I'd be available too. Okay, good. Yeah. So well, when are you planning on vacation? If you're on two week vacations in the, in early August. Oh, oh okay. So you should be, you'll done. be fine. So yep. it, it is conceivable that in this middle of August, after the host agreement for the cultivation is done and people apply for that, that you would issue two host agreements for different yes. parties at different locations mm -hmm. and we could then move forward the application process on that. Right. right. Well, and right. In, in, on the cultivation. On, on the, the cultivation. cultivation. Correct. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. just hesitant. To, I just want to make sure that we've had enough time to do research on the host agreement for the dispensary part. Because mm -hmm. uh, I feel... No, no, I was just talking about yeah. the cultivation. Yep. Yeah. I'm not pushing no, no, no. the dispensary. It's a <coughs> I feel it's really important that we mo move ahead on the cultivation. That's why I wanted to have separate host agreements for mm -hmm. the activi different activities. Because the cultivation does have a longer lag time, but also it's not fair to hold it up. It's pretty straightforward or, in my mind. Uh, yep. It doesn't... Um, you know, it, our farmers need to be able to be competitive and get going, and and business person needs to get going as yourself needs to get going. So there's no reason to hold up on the cultivation part of it. Right. Um, okay. I just am not 100% comfortable on, on my research on this on this dispensary oh, part time. yet. We get yeah. time. Okay. All right. Can you explain Great. the manufacturing part to me again? Because I thought when you were in the overlay zone. Yeah, they said it was okay. Yeah, yeah. no, it was, it was okay. my, my, uh, I just, the, Is having right? a separate right. cultivation, I, I mean, having all the separate host agreements, I just wanted to be clear that the manufacturing couldn't be, you know, we, we the, our, There's the no Oxford, available. the Oxford pickle site was off the table. That's no longer available. Right. That's off the table, but yeah. but in the overlay zone. I, I believe in the overlay district. Right. I'd have we, to should get, we should get clarification on. Yeah, it's but my I'm, special I'm pretty sure in the overlay I district. Didn't bring my zone right. Yeah. That was they, my understanding. So I just got a little confused when you started talking that, about right. expedited and pickles and. Things. Yeah. Well, I just wanted <laughs> to be clear. We're going to vote on property transfer, and there's no longer Oxford pickle is no longer no, no, available. No, Mr. Vaughn would be in its building. 
Okay. Right. Yep. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming. Thank Good you to see for you. coming. Take care, John. Okay. Wendy, do you have a, a report for us? Um, well, some things we covered. Um, so green communities, that was great news. I will have the contracts and all that for you to sign at a future meeting. Um, the closing was done on parcel C today. I've got a bunch of paperwork uh, for you to sign. <laughs> we'll okay. get to that. Was there anything to do with the uh, the, the wetlands? Thing? Uh, there is, the and I'll we'll talk. Okay. I'll talk you through that. Great. Um, I'm hoping to get the uh, the police station roof projects ready to go and. Um, it will be published in the state bulletins and the state website. And it's just called Combis and our website and bulletin board next week, and we're moving along with that. Hopefully have quotes in uh, by the 23rd. We'll have a, um, on the 9th, Kevin will be away, so we have a little bit of longer dis longer time period here, but we're gonna have a, you know, like a project view, walk around through whatever, you know, wanna walk through the roof, but on right. August 9th. Um, and, um, I t yesterday I attended the Franklin County Transportation Planning Organization meeting. Um, oh, thank you for doing that. Well, I'm now the representative for Central. Yes, we voted you at the yes, Selectmen's Association. Uh, and so uh, the other reps from municipalities, um, let's see, West County was there. Kevin Fox represents West County. I don't think there was anyone from, did I tell you there was someone from East County there? There usually And Mayor is Martin no wasn't there either. The rest of it were all Mastot and FERCOG folks. So it's important municipalities come to those, I guess. Yeah. Um, don't have much to report. We had some presentations, no votes or anything, but I'll be happy to share that as it, things happen. Mm -hmm. Is it, it can yes. you, um, do you know, did you know, do you know how far out they're going to vote on stuff? Um, um, I, or the last vote? Did you look at the minutes and find out yeah, when the last vote Yeah, I have all of that. I'm happy to provide that. I have a folder. Well, the reason why is I wanted to know, um, Diana, I know Diana and Trevor are working on the complete streets. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, no. we, we want to make sure that we get our projects. Yeah, I talked with uh, FERCOG mm -hmm. staff about that after the meeting. And okay. Because Did you tell they talked a lot about projects that had happened that were similar to the complete street strike project, but that happened with monies that aren't available anymore, like the Sunderland. I know. Years ago, at it there, there was transportation enhancement money, and that doesn't exist anymore. But I'm happy to. Um, a lot of it was bureaucratic stuff with federal regulations, air quality, conformity determinations, records we have to do, and um, but. Um, we can, we can look at through this together and let me know okay. what you think. Well, I just wanted to make sure we were in line for something. I mean, now that you're willing to go yeah. to the meetings. Well, it's, I, uh, again, I represent more than Deerfield. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I certainly have, would like to bring things forward that, um, but I, I don't know the timetable right now for, I know they amend the plan often during the year. A lot of, also, um, a good portion of what they discuss are transit uh, issues, and FRTA is there. What, what I also wanted to bring up is that um, Max Hartshorn had said that they're, they're re adding a second rail line between Deerfield and Greenfield, mm -hmm. about five miles. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, well, we didn't, didn't know get talked about, about it all yesterday, yes. so I, I don't know about that. They've been working on that for yeah. a year. Jeez, I didn't know anything about it. Uh, no, no one said anything. Uh, are they taking well probably if it's been over a year they didn't talk yeah, about but it if yet. they're doing five miles aren't they going to do the north main street bridge where does this start it goes it'll fit under there no way hmm. really i think so <laughs> they go it, the I tracks noticed, are only about i noticed the plans apart. for that bridge from 1909 are in that I know. room all well, rolled up it's in really yeah. decrepit shape we have I had a long conversation about. with um fur cog uh, with Maureen, the head of the transportation, about that bridge, seems like a year ago, and uh, you know someone brought it up, and I looked into it. And first of all, it's in bad shape, but it's there are many, many bridges in the county on, in worse shape. I know, but and the experience that the town had with mm -hmm. getting that money and the pushback that they got from the town is. Um, Created a, yeah, it, it created a problem for going back again. Um, 
but it's something but to talk about. we need to be about. proactive on it because it is in pretty bad shape, and if we have to shut that down, I mean, I was just well, the other day, I was behind a tr this huge trailer truck that went over there. And I, it's I, just I said the same thing. I, if I had the ability to write tickets, I could do 10 a day. But, but I was happy because I've seen a state trooper over there by um, the Sokolowski property sitting there. Um, there are a lot of big trucks that go over there, and they shouldn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we, if, you, if that's something the board is interested in doing, we can work to put a package together and probably talk about the kinds of, uh, if you want to move forward with that, kinds of issues that came up last time that you're going to mitigate this time. Well, I, I think it's important that we move forward with it and we try to do it, present it in a positive light. We try to work with neighbors and, you know, exactly. figure that's out the I'm concerns and stuff mm -hmm. like that because if, if that bridge shuts down, that has tremendous impact on the response time for, you know, EMS. our police and fire. And no, not really. Well, it could <laughs> be. No, because they can go right out there. I, I think what I think of about that, the bridge, I, Unless I've the been other involved side of the bridge. with it, is it, it's not... It is poor, but if we fix it the way I believe it was intended before, you're almost inviting a lot more truck traffic that way. And I think that would impact the, the residents of that street more. But then, then we can try to get some kind of um, amended design. I don't know. Okay. I, I just, if that shuts down, that, that definitely affects school buses and the route the school buses take. Yeah. And, and I... Yeah, people, I, I, people have uh, probably to all of you and to me as well come in and said, you know, it is problematic um, mm -hmm. with the rerouting of the buses and the Pelican traffic. And um, so, you know, we can continue to discuss that and figure yeah. out if you want to go forward with Well, the, I think we should, we should take the, make the effort to be positive and try to make it a positive thing mm -hmm. and not let it be closed down for two or three years and have all kinds of problems and say, oh, geez, you know, not prepared. I, I'm trying to understand why if it was um, slated and on the list and then we got to the tipping point and then the uh, opposition by neighbors basically killed the project, why is it even not in even worse condition than it was before? Did we do repairs to that or? Um, um, I, I think what happens is on that bridge stuff, it's pretty subjective. I know. I know if bridges are really bad shape, truly well, they get on the list. But I mean, I went to that meeting. I was a representative of that meeting, and every, I mean, every it seemed like every year I had to fuss and scream about the Stillwater Bridge and get that on the list. Mm -hmm. But that particular bridge, one of the issues is it has a wooden deck on it, and uh, that, that was problematic. So what they they decided to do is they paved it, so now it's smooth, but then they had to, you know, they also restricted the weight by quite a bit, you know, to compensate for the pavement. Mm -hmm. So the bridge is relatively okay. smooth, but, you know, it can't support that much weight. Right. Is there anything else, or can we move on? Or? Yeah, move on. All right, the sewer <laughs> abatements. Um, so, I don't know where we're at with this process, other than, um, you know, I think we're not offering sewer abatements for irrigation, um, for right. anything other than, you know, obviously, error in readings Reading. and you know burst pipes that kind of thing we we did get a new one um for a bur uh, burst pipe and but we'd have to research a bit of how much water was used how much is normal what we would abate that kind of thing so i'd want to talk with you guys about that or have you look okay. at this one okay. um again all, all the rest at irrigation we don't really have a uh, policy for and we're not abating so that's kind of where we're at at the moment, and that's, I think, every other one in this. Um, I've, I've seen some communications around where residents were talking about having a separate meter uh, put in their house uh, for irrigation, if you will. Uh, I don't but know don't think the water department's going to read it, so... Yeah, I don't then really know how that works. So. How are we going to, you know... Are we going to pay, hire somebody to go around and... Well, then everybody would have to get an added then end cost up, to their bill. Yeah, the cost to their bill, which, you know, I don't know. I think uh, the way we've arranged it um, with... Uh, well, we were talking with uh, Eagle Brook. They mm -hmm. declined to do it. They were going to put in... And it's been talked about for and a Frontier decade. And has one. Right. For their fields. Yeah, and, and I think some farmers do as well. About, yeah. Figuring about reading. And they stuff. send us the reading. <laughs> So, um, I, I think it might be useful going forward for the 
you as the sewer commissioners to meet with the water commissioners? Yeah, I do too, and I also, and then yeah. research what other communities are doing with this issue. I, actually, I see a lot of that kind, all these issues that come up around this as being part of the contract work right. with, with David Prickett. Yep, um, I agree with that. To help us sort through these things, having worked in many other communities. So. See, I, I think in this particular case, if you look the history, you know, of uh, 50,000, 90,000, right. 8,000, and you know, and then, 400, and then 407. Obviously, there's it's an obviously, issue. Obviously, yeah. Right, but I just don't know what the normal. Uh, well, even to, like even, even if, if we baited to the pick, highest pick one, the highest maybe, one, yeah, or an average of and, them. I mean, it I was, just don't know what that policy is for for that. If it's discretionary, not, or I think it's usually been discretionary. But the water department said, in fact, that there was a broken pipe. Yes, it, they did. They documented that, and then they did document that it didn't go down the sewer. It, it yep. went into the ground. So that's kind of where we're at with that. Um, so I was just going to get a little bit more research during the week on this one and um, maybe bring it to you for a vote next week or something. Or on this one? Yeah, unless you yeah. have a, I don't no, know. I don't know if you want to just pick, do you want to just say we'll, go, we'll, we'll abate it to the highest one in the previous years, which was 95,000? I don't know. What do you think? How much, how much do they? Well, have? you see. Even if you picked the very highest one, it was like twenty-eight, fifty-one, ninety-five. Like, and all of a sudden, it was four hundred and seven. So yeah, and let's it, let's abate it to the um, or twenty-five per oh, one hundred twenty-five percent of your last yeah. last year. So the the idea when we were going to do this, we were going to do a um, hundred twenty-five percent well, abatement of for winter, but not summer. So. And I don't know if that's a winter or summer well, reading. The, the highest one, the, the highest one was a summer. So I mean, that's. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do 125 percent of that of that last year's. Yeah. That was the policy I was kind of proposing, but we haven't gotten there yet. So I don't know if you want to wait a week well, and I think hammer this we, out. They already get that anyways. They do only in the uh, only in the summer months. Right. Yep. Not in the winter months. Right. Exactly. Well, yeah. I mean, Whatever you do, can we? Try to keep it consistent. Yes, yep. that's, yeah, that's so I was so hoping. Was can we wait one week to do that? Oh, yeah, just yeah, so I can hammer that out. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's create that policy okay. along with my other notes from last sure. week. I don't, Perfect. I don't have any problem with it though, because legitimately, yeah, it's that's obviously way legitimate. Way just, yeah. I just want to get get the policy right. Okay. 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 The the land. What is this? Landfill and new wells for landfill? Is it? Um, Wendy, I I know Kevin's. Is Kevin on vacation? No. Oh. Well, um, I don't understand well, I why. He will be leave, he'll be going out of town tomorrow for a little. Oh well, I don't understand why are the wells, the current wells, are too dry. They're they're not. You can't take the not measurement. Today. <laughs> um, I can't explain that. I, I know um, you have the. There's two contracts with Apex. Yeah. No, um, and we have to drill two new wells. I thought we had the DEP letter, letter attached. I know. But I don't understand why the, um, the wells are not, uh, we can't take a measurement out of the existing well. I'm, I, this is the first I've heard that they're not, that they're dry, too dry. Why can't we just make them deeper? Are you looking at the DEP letter? Uh. Uh. I'm first looking at the, the quote or the proposal. Well, that's in response to the DEP yes. letter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. Just say dry. Information right. available right. indicates right. that the wells have not been sampled because they were unable to be located under the snow bank. Right, this is Have the, been dry yeah. or Which one? they were yeah. insufficient volume of groundwater present to sample. I mean, it has been extremely dry. The last couple of years. Um, I mean, I hate to build, do new wells. Reinstallation. Um, Reinstallation. Well, if there's when, no water in the well, the well water can't be contaminated, right? This is well, the That's what I'm saying. Why do we <laughs> have to dry it? I see. And if it's too dry to have flow, because you're, you're, what you're doing is testing groundwater. Yeah. And if, and if, if it's too no dry to have. Huh? Groundwater. Why do we have to have? Well, do new wells. Can we just get? I mean, is Kevin the one to know this and answer this? And can we have just a quick meeting with him the next time he's free? Do we have to do? Do this we have to do I these mean, do tonight? We have to make a decision uh, tonight. We'd like to move it along, but. Um, or could we sign? I, I guess I'm. I just. I'm. 
because I don't. He'll be, he'll be here. I would expect him here on Monday, so um, I can ask him to. Yeah, just to clarify, just just so I know what I'm doing, and then. Um, yeah. yeah. And the other contracts for the regular for the. For our normal. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm just he wondering. More, he was more eager uh, to have the, the other one, the one we're talking about, move the, on. Um, than the than the regular. Right. Evaluation. Right. We need both. I mean, I'm not doubting that they've not been 17. able to take samples, but if it's too dry to take samples, that, that doesn't make sense. Okay. Yeah, I guess, yeah, um, it's been going on a long time. <laughs> well, we've been in answer. drought, an extreme drought. Right, look at, look at, is there a page number? That's I mean, the, obviously, this week. On the, on the last page of the um, April 8th, is it 22nd? Is that the contract? This is the, there's an attachment called the e -page, yeah. email page 2 for DEP. So basically, it says that there's an email on the back that says they have to be done in 2018. But the, the notice you got was dated 2015. 2015. Well, that's so what you I'm had, saying. You had a, yeah, but you haven't done it since 2000. 15, it seems like. So now they're saying All right, so it has to be completed in 2000. It's on the docket. He's got it underlined. It's so okay, it was, one. Just, can I just take a minute and read this then? If this has to be done. I mean, if we're mandatory, there's nothing we can do about it. But honestly, this is I feel like if there's no, no water to test it, it's that means no, there's no contamination. Well, I mean, this order's from 2015, but we do have those wells there. They're not, it's not from 2015, Diana, that they're it's asking for additional it's wells. It's, 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 no, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. And we, and we, they told you to do so. Um, um, we installed wells. It was dry. And we solved the problem of the. Mm -hmm. Other problems. Well, if we do meet next week, um, we'll have the answer and hopefully we can move forward. I'm sorry to be a pain, but I, I just, I, if there's no, well, if there's no groundwater to test. Well, can they test today? Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure there's, there's groundwater now. water now. now. I, uh, I don't know. I just, if I could just get a little bit more clarity on this, yeah. I'd be happy to support it. I just want to make I sure we're just, doing the right thing here. I was just wondering if the drought years are affecting the groundwater. I mean, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That all of a sudden, these wells that we've been testing for years have dried up. It's been so, dry. Yeah. So, so, well, I think he was the one who sent the email. Yeah, right. This, you looked at this page, which is the, the bat email side, exchange. The emails, yeah, that's the seven, dated seven April, items. Yeah, yep. and it's from April 24th as a follow up to. Um, items that should have been addressed. And what does it say, Wendy? At the top it says workplace. It's part of the June 22nd contract, which okay. is for the additional wells. Re it's for reinstalling monitoring wells, not new wells, but right. I guess. Yeah, okay. You got that How much part. Is, Let's look on the back. How much is that contract to do these? Wait, is this the one it's that 30, we... 30000 Is this the one that we set money aside in our budget as we were discussing this last year? It says that. It does say something about Because we talked about. Remember, we budgeted were, for 2017. We were back and forth and back and forth on the, on the cost, and it kept kind of coming down, and I think we finished our budget around $60,000. I don't think that this is that. This is not that. Additional to that. This is additional to that? Because this is 27500 that's the monitoring, but then there's. Here, basis of billing. But then the. Mine says 29,000. There's, there's two. So there's the first one is is monitoring. Let's see. You yeah, I'm talking Martin about the well writings. replacement. <laughs> Mine's June 22nd. Mine's April. So let me see if I can June find June 22nd you. is the cover letter. April 24th is at the very bottom of the page, which is includes a, an email, which is Larry Hansen's email to, I don't know, Dick, if, if why would, would Dick have gotten this, who Dick is, but Kevin yeah, and Dick. I don't think I have that. Wait, wait, wait. I got the this, April 20th. This is June. Uh, it's on the back of attachment email. June 22nd. 
Hmm. And it's basically saying, remember, we well, need to do this. Oh, okay, here it is, from the back. Oh, no, that's a... Oh, no, this is from the uh, engineers. Yeah. Okay. This is from Apex. The web, the, the email's from DEP. No, I... I, I oh, that's, sorry. We're okay. looking at the... the um, but included in the proposal was the DEP email. That's, you know, documenting the reasons. That's just for their services. So. I don't know if they're the ones that actually do the, the drawing or not. He oversees. Yeah. I think they subcontracted yeah. out. Oh. And she's with um, the rest of the I don't think that, I mean, they've been here doing that. Whatever. I mean, if we, if we have to do it, because this says that we have to do it, but we've had too many, too many years of not. This is catching up to things we should, should have done. I know. I told Kevin I'd have you sign these tonight. That's why I don't need. Well, if we sign them, can we just verify that we actually have to do them before I'm you? I'm sure we have to. I mean, based on this email. Yeah. Kevin vetted it and gave it to me. Okay. And we budgeted for it, right? All right, then I move we sign it. I, I, just, I just want us to check on it, that's all. Uh, if that's OK. If that's all right with you. Do we have something to sign? Yeah, we have yeah, to sign I have contract. them here. Do you want I would just give that, I have a number of things, and if we want to wait to, I prefer right. at the end of the meeting so you can get through everything. All right, somebody want to okay? make a motion to sign oh, yeah, it? Yeah, I made a motion to sign it. If we could just verify it. Second. Kevin, if you're watching, Any further discussion? It. All those in yeah, favor? Yeah, can we get a text, aye. Kevin? <laughs> we'll sign it, you but then just, just have. I'm an I. yep. Yeah, I can I'm hold on I. to it. Just right. check it. That's all. Okay. All right. Uh, the Dumont closing documents. Okay. Um, as I've got those. There are four different documents. Again, we can wait yep. till the, the end. There's a settlement agreement. Yep, I saw uh, that. Okay. Is that what we spoke with uh, the, uh, the lawyer the other day about? Uh, yes. The, the Actually, it's the actual undertaking agreement yep. that's in there. That is what we're doing. And we've got to sign these tonight, send them overnight mail tomorrow and should have our payment for the land on Monday. Okay. You've already voted to do this. This is just the paperwork. But, um, yeah, we do need to vote the undertaking. I wonder why. Do we vote the amount, Wendy? Right. I'm sorry? Do we vote the amount? Um, you can vote to sign. And then I would say on this indemnification and undertaking agreement um, that you, um, which is it's a separate really from the normal closing uh, paper, paperwork. This has to do with what we were talking about yesterday with about Conservation Commission. And this basically... Since we own the land, you own the land now, it asks you to start the paperwork with the Conservation Commission Okay. on a determination on that property. So I would take a vote on that. Uh, what to, what, would, what to would the motion be? Motion be to that sign, we to, to sign, sign and yes, yeah, sign and commit to you know under doing the indemnification, sign the indemnification undertaking agreement. Sign the indemnification undertaking agreement. Mm -hmm. If you agree, I, I still don't get that, but that's okay. Okay. That just you starts the conservation. You? Do you have it in front of you? No, I don't. No. I don't Maybe Kip can explain it. He was there. We were trying. Why, to... why do we have Did to? I I've never voted <laughs> something for the <laughs> conservation <laughs> district. <laughs> I mean, the conservation um, they do. commission. What? You don't have that. What was explained to me is that they wanted the town, because the town is the current owner, to start the process of all of the uh, conservation, a notice of uh, determination and, and that sort. Um, there wasn't a, a letter of conditions uh, by the Conservation Commission issued to the bakery um, or to the town um, prior to the bakery's closing, which included all of that land. And part of the um, 
200 foot buffer zone falls on this parcel C that we're selling to them. Uh, and we know to, they know that if they are going into that area, they have to apply to the Conservation Commission for more uh, notice of determination and things like that. Uh, but they want the town to start the process because we are the owners when it, we got the notification. Okay. Oh, okay. clears it for them to file the all right. papers it, it in didn't the registry. Seem like it, even though they, they're the ones that are going to take it all over, they wanted us to initiate it. But they're the ones that are actually going to do it. It seemed to be a bit backwards to me, but that's what they explained. It, it, wow. What's that? No. So go ahead. I'm, so the, you, they are, they're asking you to basically get the to to meet the order of conditions if there is one, basically. But there aren't any. That's, there aren't any. That's it. So, so you just have to order an, an issue of uh, non-applicability, basically. Right. The Concom yep. does. Yep. And that's a definite, there is no right. order. And it's unless they decide to build within that buffer zone, which we supplied them with a map that delineated where that buffer zone is. And it's, right. I don't really, I mean, I understand, but I don't, I personally don't get it's, it. It's closing because, the loopholes. Because the brook is connected to the river, the brook, there's a 200 foot river bank separation. So, I mean, everything's okay. kind of connected to the river if you want to look at it that way, but. That's that's what it's fine. That's fine. Yeah. So I make that motion. I made that motion, Wendy. Okay. Except Trevor, we'll, we'll, we'll get it exactly the way that attorneys wanted. But the essence is to sign. Sign the. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Trevor, are you second it? Are you seconding? Second. Are you still reading? <laughs> I'm still trying to read. You know, I work. <laughs> it's hard to get all this. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I know it is. That's an amazing amount of info. Oh, and you have to be a lawyer to figure it out. I know. In even when 20 minutes. A, even when there was a it's, lawyer it's, there and she explained it, it, you know, every time I ask a question, it's like, well. He, no, it was he this time. It was a he. Oh, no, not that I spoke to. I spoke to a she. Yesterday when we were all in the office? Yeah. Isn't that a she? It was David Dignan. No. Oh. <laughs> I mean, sorry, sorry, David. David. <laughs> Forget it. Don't say anymore. Yep. Let's just move on. Yeah, Priscilla was there, and and yep. and uh, Louis Mission from the Conservation That's Commission, right. and you, yep. and me, and the attorneys. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I probably would have made the same mistake. So, so long ago. Okay, so that's that. Apex they did. They, they, they so moved. Down Carolyn moved. Yeah, I, I just, seconded. I'm just want to get rid of all. I don't all think we got a vote. My though, apex. Yeah. Oh, we didn't vote yet. I don't think we did. Vote. I didn't say I yet. She's calling. You're gonna call the vote. We we made the motion, but and second it, but you didn't call the vote. Yeah, I did. Is there no further discussion? All those in favor? And you said aye, and I interrupted him for oh. reading, and he said aye too. Oh, did you? No, I seconded. it. We still need to aye. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> and that was to sign all of the paperwork relative to the yes. sale. Yes. yes. And then separately, uh, I'd like to have this separated. Out. The, the indemnification <coughs> separate? Yeah, only okay. because. Well, um, that was only one book. So make, an, yeah. make a motion to sign the indemnification and yeah. undertaking agreement? I, I made that motion. You well, have to do I, the I, other I, one. Yeah, we're separating them. You okay. did make that motion. You're right. Yeah. <coughs> so this, you have to do the other. Make a motion to sign the purchase and sale agreement. No, it's not a purchase and sale agreement. <laughs> Can you tell me what we're signing? I'll tell you what you're signing. Settlement statement. Um, you're signing an exchange assignment. You're a signing a quick, quick claim deed. Quick claim, claim deed, deed and okay. a settlement statement. So let me do these. What it, she said. Let me do these. Okay. We'll get so, it in the minutes. Mm -hmm. So make a motion to, to sign the exchange assignment. But quick deed. Quick, and then a motion to sign the quick claim deed and a motion to sign the settlement statement. And I'll second that. that. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next. And then you, you're going to sign it. We're going to sign at the end? Sign at the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we move down to some appointments. Um, Eric Henderson uh, to the alternate wiring inspector's position. Second. I make a motion. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, 
Do we, we have a, a resignation from the ZBA from Richard Kalaszewski? Make a motion to accept the resignation of Richard Kalaszewski from the ZBA. I'll second that and say thank you very much for yes. service. Yes, thank you, Dick. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We need an appointment to uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals to Chris Fischette. Um, Sec second. Uh, I make a Wait. motion to do that. Oh, which one are you? I'm this sorry, is for Chris, Chris Pichette to the Conservation no. Committee. Oh, no, to the Zoning, zoning Board yeah, of Appeals. Yeah, we've got two applications for each. Yes. Um, and so. Can we can we do the, do we have an opening for alternate too, right? Right. And, and no, we have someone here for, who's who's applied for one of the positions. For so which board? Uh, conservation. conservation. Oh, okay. So we're doing zoning right now. Um, I made the motion, or you made the motion to do Chris Pachette um, for the Zoning Board of Appeals. And how about we add Adam Sokolowski as the alternate? Yep. Okay. That board sounds of good. Appeals. Yep. Regular and alternate. Regular and alternate. Yep. yep. So I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, thank you to Chris and thank you to Adam for volunteering to do that. It's very important. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. just replace Full board for the ZBA. Thank you. Chris, yeah. Then. Um, Uh, so then we have some interest in the Conservation Commission. We have two from applicants. Mr. Tom Sharp and Mr. Tim Hitchie. Um, I, I want to say um, I'm really... Um, it's very nice that Tom has volunteered, but um, I feel uh, that Deerfield Academy has an awful lot of business before the Conservation Commission on a regular basis, and I feel that it would be a conflict. Um, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable. But on the other hand, I mean, he can, you know, um, recuse himself to something. I'm sure he wouldn't even deal with it. I mean, we deal with that at the uh, planning board. I mean. Uh, a lot of things come up because of uh, True Corp and John works for them. He just recuses himself. And, um, but, you know, he's got a lot of experience. He, he sure understands. I think he'd be a good, a good member there. I just think it was huge conflict, that's all. Hmm. Want to weigh in? Um, could, could we hear from the other applicant that's here? Sure. Do you want to come up? Tim? Tim, come on up. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thanks Thank you for, for coming in and sitting board. through our whole our whole meeting. <laughs> well, it was interesting to see the see the pot discussion. <laughs> you guys spend a lot of time, so yes. I was going to say it was kind of going up in smoke, but that <laughs> yeah. Well, no. <laughs> I'll punt the side. Um, so tell us about your interest in the ComCom. Well, um, as you may know, I've been on the CPC uh, for the last two years, and during that time I have been acquainted with Steve Barrett, and he mentioned that he was, um, he'd been involved in the ComCom for many, many years. Many years yes. And uh, in two different occasions, and that he was going to be stepping away. Um, I became interested in that, so I looked into uh, this earlier in May, um, and then after expressing interest in getting some documentation about what the CONCOM does, um, I uh, was, uh, Wendy spoke to me and said, well, if you're interested, you should you know, send a letter, so I did. Yeah. Um, a little bit about myself, yeah. uh, I have a scientific background, I've studied electrical engineering at Worcester Polytech. And before that, I worked for a company in the research chemistry department uh, for Nike Shoe Company. Um, professionally, I've been a journalist, and I'm, now I'm retired. So okay. um, I 
started my relationship with Franklin County in 1981. I came and was a student intern reporter at the recorder and oh. I uh, met my wife at the recorder and she's a native of Franklin County uh, we're both retired now and nice. we bought uh, Fred McDonald's house in 2014 oh, and okay. uh, we're almost neighbors yeah yeah right. I think we're two two houses apart that's right and um, when we were finished making the changes we wanted to make um, we sold our Pat's family home in Turner's yep. and moved in in 2015. Um, since I'm retired, I have a lot of time on my hands and uh, uh, my wife likes to keep me busy and <laughs> I like to keep myself busy. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about my interest in... Um, yeah. Well, one of the things that is um, Steve... Steve has done a wonderful job over the years. Um, the regulations are quite hefty. And um, one of the things that I think is really, really important is um, Steve made a, a huge effort to work with Mark Stenson. The, he's sort of like the traveling DEP person that comes and helps um, towns <laughs> interpret the regulations. and. Um, so it's huge shoes to fill on this. Um, he has been the backbone of the Conservation Commission for many years. And um, so having him go is, is a huge loss to the town. So um, the fact that you um, can read really well. <laughs> and um, and, and I, I mean, I'm really, it's, it's really, it's important to read the regulations and to try to get a handle on them and then work with Mark Stenson and um, so I, I really f I am supportive of, of your um, application and I um, am really happy that you are interested and that you have the time to commit because it is going to be um, a huge learning curve I'm afraid um, in the beginning and it's real tough because you know Steve has resigned already so there is quite a lot of um, work to do right now. That board's currently a five-member board? Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, you know, I, I guess I, I always look for experience and stuff like this, and I, um, nothing against you, Tim, but I, this other man, I know he's been doing this pretty much his whole life. Um, I, I would like to ha see um, Mr. Sharp on there, and maybe we could have Tim be an alternate on the board. Um, in, in case of different things like that. Um, I just like people who, who have a lot of background in dealing with that type of thing. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, not, not just in this, but in anything that you know, I see come before the town. Um, I, if, I, because of the conflict issue, I, if, if you wanted to have Tom as the um, alternate, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that. I'm not saying that he's not yeah. qualified. I just feel like there are too many things that he would not be able to vote on. Well, thanks for the Deerfield Academy, but that's it. You know. Could I just um, add a, a, one of the things that I did as a journalist was I was a science reporter. So I've written about the environment extensively, um, you know, for the New York Times. And uh, not that that matters. I did it at the recorder as well. Yeah. Um, so that is an area that I've had a lifelong interest in, uh, mm -hmm. not, as a, not as an official in practicing for the town, but that may be uh, germane. Um, I, just my view, I, I'm, I'm willing to support Tim for the job. I think with the time that he has to invest in the research and um, the interest in it, um, I, I think I think you'll take a serious. Obviously, you can see it's a it's a serious decision for us, and I think you'd take Absolutely. a very serious, you know, um, a go at learning what what needs to happen and and being a fair arbiter of um, of the things that come before the board. Um, I would certainly I I like Tom. I, I don't know him well, but I, I know he does a um, a good job at what he does, and I think you know if he wanted to be an alternate, I'm fine with that too. I am concerned a little bit about how much happens along the river not that he is Deerfield Academy obviously but um, 
but he does work for them. So I, you know, I don't know. I just. I make a motion we appoint Tim um, to the Conservation Commission and Tom as alternate to the T Conservation Commission. I'll second that. Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank consideration. You. Yeah, uh, welcome. I'll give your, you your encyclopedia and link. I'll put Steve on Steve down. Yeah. And then uh, um, at some point, maybe you'll mention to come in and uh, swear in at the, at the yeah. town yeah, office. Yeah, that'll yeah. All be, that'll you'll happen. get a notice. Perfect. Right. Okay. Thank you. I, Thank you, Tim. Um, maybe we can arrange for you to meet um, Mark Stenson. Um, yeah. I, he, he's, he's really a good guy, and he tries to work with towns, and I think it would be um, really uh, beneficial to us as a town and you individually to just reach out to him and... I also am on the I'm on many mailing lists, including the Mass Association Conservation Commission. So I'm forwarding that information to Bill Marapizzi, who just got on, and I can do that with these the two new uh, appointees after and they I, get sworn in. And I just met I forwarded you the um, woman's name. I she, I just met her at the state commission meeting. She's a new executive director of the Conservation Commission. Um, group association and the, she has all kinds of trainings and just information that they're doing and she also is willing to do she seems really energetic I mean the person they had before was like kind of deadbeat this she is like energy Did plus energy no don't put that <laughs> but she's like energy and energizer bunny and so she's willing to come out and do trainings and and get, get you all kinds of information and she just seemed like such a nice lady, so I will. I think, I, yeah, I have that. Yeah, yeah I forwarded her name I, to and you. And I forwarded it to. to yeah. So maybe I have we to can. Say, I, I just want to say that yesterday, when we had that conference call with council around this um, indemnification and whatever, mm -hmm. um, um, I was very impressed by um, Louis Mission. Uh, he was very creative in his. He. he was clearly well, Louis's been capable. on there for a while. He's going yeah. to step up as chair, I believe. So yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, sure. So we can, so maybe we can do some training out here. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the FERCOG does occasionally and host ConCom trainings yeah. as well. ConCom is the you might know that I don't know. <laughs> well, well I, the, I also have a friend who's a longtime Leiden Conservation Commission yeah. member, so I'll also. Well, the Mass free. Massachusetts Watershed. Um, association that I'm uh, involved with, they do a training usually sometime in October for the in joint with the conservation commissions. It's usually at the trustees of reservations out um, towards Lemonster area, okay. and and it's usually a wonderful all day thing. I mean, it's very interesting. So we'll get you that information. Eager to have too. our board members okay. right, get again. training and stuff. Thank, Thank you, you, Tim. So Deerfield 350th Planning Committee. Oh. What about? Um, um, Do we have another person that's yeah, interested? Yeah, well, um, Stan any. Adams. Oh, yeah, no, we had already appointed him. You did? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, he's very interested. Why are you looking at me? Um, it was... Uh, Why are you looking at me? <laughs> Henrietta Colcott, uh, Peter Thomas, Stan Adams, and um, Jay uh, Stryker, Stryker have already volunteered. Oh, great. Oh, well, we didn't appoint did you, them. When, when did you appoint them, them, Carolyn? We didn't appoint um, them. We appointed him. Oh, is it a yearly appointment? I thought no. We, we this is a brand new committee. This sorry, this is for a planning committee for the three hundred and fifty. A, a few months ago, we plan. I mean, you in January. I think. Oh, okay, that was before me. When I was at a meeting one one time when Wendy wasn't here, you discussed forming a committee, right. but that was as far I as I knew you yeah. had gone. Yeah, I didn't I, no, we did. And well, appointed it sounds familiar. I just would need to go back. Well, I, I remember discussion, but I don't remember formal action. Well, I, I make a motion that we appoint Henrietta Cocott, Jay Stryker, Peter you. Thomas, no, um, Stan Adams. And who did I say? Somebody else. Did you say uh, Jay Stryker already? Yes. Jay Stryker, uh, Stan Adams, Henrietta Colcott and Peter Thomas. Okay, so Maybe these that, are all there people. Is only four. Most of these are people with strong historical yes. backgrounds. Um, uh, they already showed interest. They were okay. willing to um, step up to the plate. On I, sense, rem I remember I doing this, but I, I just got a narrow. Well, I recruited P thing. Peter Thomas okay. when he was in in here. Came in to do something about the church. 
Oh, I you remember, remember that. that. Yes, I do remember and then that. Jay Stryker yep. volunteered. Henrietta Cocott was very interested. That's and great. Stan Adams has been interested right get. from the beginning. Yeah. And he's yeah. a he's a an organizer of events, which yep. is really oh, what we're talking about. Yes. Overall, and Huge. then then plugging in these various right. activities and interest areas that people have. Mm -hmm. I wonder so, who used to plan the parades we used to have in town? Because they were great. Yeah. Oh yeah, they'd start down at the DPW garage and they'd go all the way to the high school. It was really. Oh yeah. I bet Sharon did. You don't remember that? That was <laughs> find out. 80, Sharon might 83, know. 83, 84, that right? 85. Oh yeah. The parade itself was two miles for, long. For wow. for what event? For just, Fourth of July. Fourth, Fourth of July. Really? You don't remember that? No. Oh yeah, we had what? and you had seven or eight bands and there. there and really? Oh, this yeah. is about five, five years away. So they've got. This is this know. needs to happen. Yeah, but well, that's when the events I mean, the whole the whole state yard was filled. The state yard? Yeah, down there on 116, and we started there and went down. It came up Sugarloaf Street and ended at the field where the elementary school was. I remember like chicken barbecues and stuff. But I, I, don't I went to one, I remember. Well, let's yeah, let's get this going. I got some videos ago. of them I can Do show you. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to see them. Quite, quite I'm impressive. excited. Well, well Sutherland's yeah. was great. We need to kind of. Okay, let's go. Step move it up. Yeah, for Cog Planning Board representative. For a COG planning board representative? Doesn't uh, John Bronis do that for a planning board? Yeah. yeah. Hey, so you're getting does one he, planning does he go? board appointment and one select board appointment. Oh, jeez. Oh. So does <laughs> does John go to those? Yeah, John he does, does go. Great. He does go. Um, I, I've seen him there. Awesome. Um, oh, did you say one select board appointee or appoint, one member of the select board? Appointee. Oh, we get to appoint someone. Right, but well, what's no, the point it doesn't have to be. It, it could be one <laughs> of you. It could be one. It could be one of you. It could be Diane. You want to do it? It could be Diane. Who's no. he looking at? You. You. <laughs> no. Um, no. What is it? No, no they meet monthly. That's a more of a commitment it, than the fur Yeah, I think it would be good, better. I was on it this is the 30 years ago. Point. I was on the Franklin County Regional well, Planning Board. It probably hasn't changed at all. So. <laughs> well, I have to say, I was on it, I was on it when we had now. the initial garbage crisis in Franklin County, maybe around garbage the state. Crisis? Yes, when we had, to close, we had to close oh. all the, we, talked, we called it garbage back then. Is it like, uh, and we Wally? had to close, all the landfills had to be closed. And no, we actually nice. came up with an idea for having a cogeneration plant mm -hmm. in Turner's Falls uh -huh. at the mill. I, I want to talk about this. But Let then me Wally do this. came out. <laughs> and then um, the whole county supported, but of course, you know, Montague didn't support it. But it was a wonderful, very, very futuristic idea mm -hmm. back in 1980, I think. And uh, we also had a proposal to have a Franklin County Energy Authority that came out of the planning board. Was your dad on the planning board? Yep. I was. I was on it when he was on it. And um, um, and I went through all the pipelines. And you stuff. were on. Were you on? Yeah, I was on it for so years. What are they planning now? I was probably they on look it for at, fifteen if you or read twenty the, years. I'm following them regions. mostly through the paper, and they Region look at planning. issues related to the river and uh, things. Well, like they do that. the relicensing. They do the anything dam that's regional, so yeah. it's transportation, yeah. the biomass plant, Sense. the pipeline stuff. So if you would want to do it or or have. You know, someone else. I, I think it's important to get somebody else on because we kind of get burned we, out. Yeah. I mean, I we went. Need, we need community involvement. You also I know. need. I, I think I it's when, important when it was when you would point stuff. people and that the they. Years of the pipeline. That's, we should ask them to do that too. Yes. They, they need to come back and communicate with the board, and you need to communicate with them on issues so it's not just them representing themselves. So to, let's just something put to it keep out in there mind. for people to yeah. volunteer. Yeah. It, I mean, it's really good because it, it's regional stuff. Um, the le relicensing of the dams is coming up um, in 2019, April of 2019. So, I mean, that's huge. It's all the dams on the Connecticut and the Deerfield. So okay. if nobody well, volunteers, I'll probably go because I'm, I'm wicked ripped okay. that we still have no emergency action plan from... Um, Okay, Great so River Hydro. Well, can, can, before you continue, can I just ask you on the um, on the vote for the Conservation Commission was that a unanimous vote? Yes. yes. Okay, I just want to make sure. Thank you. Um, so what you're so you're putting out the call for someone yes. who might be interested? Yes, to be a planning board representative. No, this we have a well, letter for board right? representative to the Franklin to the Franklin Because they already have a planning board. Letters received regarding oh, Dollar General's proposal. What's this? Oh, the any, letter? 
I don't have any letters. Uh, oh, um, there is a letter right here. that came There is through. a letter. Actually, if you are the representative to the planning board at this, you have that oh. apparently. You are already that person. Not oh, John? The, the county planning board. Not the county John, planning board. Did you, um, no. so was there anything of interest at the FERCOG quarterly meeting um, the other night? No, I didn't go. You didn't go? No. I, I can explain why later. Oh, okay. I did not That's go. You know what? It, it's no big deal if you don't go, but you should call Wendy so Wendy can go. Yeah, she told me. I'll, I'll tell you later. Okay. Um, um, no, you said I'm on the planning this. thing? You, this document yeah. you have, it yeah. has you. This is what it the record you. is. So you You're must have voted. Your, who did that? You must have voted <laughs> last year. To, it's your phone number, so it has to be you. I mean, you did it I think already. you guys ganged up on me when I wasn't here. Well, no, you did. Right. You did. This, too, this is for last year. <laughs> really? I don't recall last year what you voted, but apparently you must have. I was it. the rep for the regular council meeting, and you were the rep for the planning board last year. Okay. So now I'm the rep for the regular one, and you're the rep for the planning board. No, I'm I'm oh. not turning I'm turning that one down because that was a monthly <laughs> meeting. That's just one All more right. monthly meeting. Well, maybe I can get notes from. And John I have a conflict on that night. I'll call John up. We'll go together. All right. There you go. Let's move on. Next thing. We'll see if someone um, steps The board up. of health comments and stuff. The only thing that I wanted to talk about is that um, I reached. Oh out. wait, we had that Dollar General letter. Did you get that? in your packet it's oh. in the back it's in the okay. back packet i just wanted to mention on that dollar general that um kip I, I know you have a planning board meeting coming up and we don't often be able to talk about this stuff i just want to make sure that we're going to get a traffic study to determine the best access for that and the, and also you know the safest that's what i'm talking about safest where it, it's where it should be and then um i noticed looking at the plans that you know, I've had experience with this at the highway garage, even though it's engineers. The bottom of the retention pond is below the seasonal high water level, and it drives me crazy. They're engineers. We're not engineers. And we have to treat over the highway garage now all the time. I don't want, because you have standing water. Oh, okay. And so I don't, number one, we are supposed to have outlawed. Um, Got it retention detention ponds because of standing water that breed mosquitoes but, well, but well, I, well, I I question that because if you say we outlawed it it's still in our bylaws well we're we're supposed to have them do water gardens or some kind of no, but isn't the proper process to change the bylaw I mean, well I thought we did well, um, apparently not because that's what's in there and, I mean, it's kind of hard to do now. I mean, if people have already, you know, taken our bylaws and engineered something to match what our rules say. Well, um, I'm pretty sure. I, I thought we did, but maybe we didn't do it. I don't know. Um, but it, it hasn't, it's not, it, that change was not reflective in our, our bylaws, so. Because this was quite a few years. I mean, this was the result of Crestview, where we have standing water standing from Crestview. Water. And that was a, we just declared that a public health um, problem. Well, I, I agree with you. I don't, I think those retention ponds are, are I, I'd never see, I, I, where I used to live on Set Right Road, they cut this huge one there. And it's, it's it, you go by the now, it's just a jungle. I mean, it used to be a field that they cut the hay in, but because of the berms they built, it's just grown into a big forest mess. Well. And you still got, it's, now it's probably going to become wetlands because, you know, you have all the foliage. You know, uh, going in the same place and creating that, you know, soil. Well, anyway, I, I just yep. noticed that it's the bottom of the detention pond is below the elevation of your yep. seasonal high water table. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is an engineering thing. This drives me crazy. And that's what happened at the highway garage. I know engineers know better. And we, sh we, as... Lay people should not have to be chasing it down, but I wanted to make sure there is you were aware of it so that you there, could chase there, it there down. There is yep. going to be a okay. traffic study. I mean, we have so we the RFQs for the um, you know the peer, peer reviews review. are due. Um, oh, I, oh okay, re received, and we're reviewing them, and we're going to make a okay. recommendation to the planning I, board. I just wanted to make sure yeah. that somebody was making the decision about the safest entrance and exit. 
Yeah, they'll be. You know, that'll that was be part impartial. of the peer review process. How would process. they plan okay. to heat that building? What? How would they plan to heat that building? It's going to be with propane gas. Uh huh. I don't know. They'll probably make all the provisions like we did with the EMS building. So if natural gas ever becomes available, they'll just tap okay. right on there. Gotcha. I'm sure they'll do the same thing. Speaking of the EMS building, uh, I spoke with Sarah, and we got the, the lease agreement all squared away. So Wendy should get a uh, draft of it by the end of this week. Well, can, we, can we discuss it next week, then, as just for a few yeah. minutes? Because it should only take a couple of minutes. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. want but me to just forward to all of you? Sure. That's yeah. fine. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. I, okay. I just think that we have to be sort of on the same page as to what is going to be included and not included, mm -hmm. and then we can forward it to the booth. Yep. I just, I just want us to make sure oh, that we're I okay. Can, I can give you the highlights. I mean, basically, it's, it's that, you know, it's our building, so we're responsible for all the outside maintenance and stuff like that, and that the tenant, uh, being skims, they're responsible for the inside maintenance. Uh, but if anything, like, you know, if the furnace breaks, it's the town's responsibility and, you know, stuff like that. If they break anything, you know, they have to, you know, pay for yeah. it. But just the maintenance and uh, it kept it simple and you know, just like uh, I... That's, I'm sure it's yeah. fine. Yep. We just have to vote it yep. to forward it. Sure. Okay. Okay. I guess that's it. Is there Did any you have a Board of Health comment? Did you? I don't have any. No? Do you have any? Sure. No. Uh, well, I just wanted to do an update on the Mosquito District. Um, we were able to spend all $100,000 of the CDC grant I by July 31st. Good job. Um, you had to spend the money and actually receive everything. And um, I want to thank Suffolk County um, Mosquito District for um, allowing us to store all our equipment in their place, which is really nice. nice. DCAM is um, working out a lease um, at, with the Mass DOT facility that's on the rotary in mm -hmm. Greenfield for free space Great. for our equipment. So eventually we'll It'll be get closer to us. <laughs> right. We have obviously we're work. working on a job description for the supervisor's job, so we haven't hired anybody, but um, the uh, D DPH is doing the trapping and t testing for us uh, at no charge. And um, there is no... Um, there's a huge amount of mosquitoes that would carry West Nile disease, much, um, much heavier than normal, even though it's a dry year. I mean, it's been wet this week, but um, so we might end up having a positive test by the end of, you know, mm -hmm. by next week. But um, so far, it's south of us. It's, you know, below yep. Northampton. Um, and there's no Tripoli anywhere in Massachusetts at the moment. It's in Rhode Island, but not not in Massachusetts. It's been really dry. Good. Uh, well, while we're talking about that, is there any uh, conversation about uh, dredging the uh, bloody brook behind Kelleher? Oh, uh, well, part of the reason why we're trapping is to show that there's a public health reason, mm -hmm. and then once we get a supervisor on staff, that would be what we would want to do is work on that area, and okay. we would work in conjunction. We, we updated the uh, municipal we vulnerability we preparedness. We are going to. <laughs> yeah, well, we're okay. in the process of updating it and submitting it, which would include that area. So we would have um, uh, flooding reasons to do it, as well as public health reasons of the mosquitoes. So yep. I think it's um, going to be possible to work there. Okay. Um, I'm hoping that we can get there in the fall. It depends on how fast we get a supervisor on staff. Okay. But Let's I'll I, move on. Uh, yeah. One quick announcement. Okay. I just wanted to announce. Uh, I wanted to, um, to uh, let you know that our interim superintendent um, had had announced that uh, he was pleased to announce George um, Lanides. I think it is. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name as uh, as our new interim principal for Frontier Regional. So I think he'll be starting shortly, and uh, just wanted to welcome him to the community. Right. That's it. Thank oh, you. that's nice. Good. Um, actually, I just uh, wanted to mention that Patty Cavanaugh, the business uh, manager for the school, Union 38, is moving on. Um, her last day is uh, July 31st. And um, so one of the things I wanted to bring up is maybe um, there won't be a business manager per se, 
So one of the things that I thought maybe we could do um, is bring all four towns together, select boards and finance committee, to discuss making a separate capital improvement projects that, at Frontier. I did go um, before our last meeting. I went to a joint meeting that you had gone to, and that they are talking about that getting a first a couple of things out of the way, but mainly getting a capital plan. They have built kind of they're working with. Um, Joe Markarian. Joe Markarian yeah. to kind of nail all that down, and I think that's, I think everyone's really on board with that. So that maybe we should do that. I mean, if, if you guys are supportive then, can we move ahead and, with an invitation to try to get that started for September? Because sure, you'd have I, to open I think up I the... I didn't go, but the, I'd like to ask Trevor, has, it, has the dialogue changed from what I experienced is, you know, like, where the priorities are this is what we're going to do how are we going to finance it well i it did talk a bit about financing because that well it really they were only really talking about financing the tier one stuff like yep. track and a couple of items I, I i mean i don't have the full list on it and i had to had to we had to end that and go and do it that the uh, personnel or the business manager meeting but um I know that a lot of that other stuff has kind of been pushed off and they dropped a f quite a few things off the list. It's not needed at this time. So they're, they're trying to build a plan for going out forward, you know, quite a few years so that they can start budgeting for it and obviously get a capital plan. But well, what I didn't I was get a full list of what was needed and what, what wasn't needed. But see, what I was talking about was getting together and having a process like we have the Capital Improvement Committee mm -hmm. And opening I up think the you'd agreement. find a lot of people willing to do that. Yeah. It seems like, you know, I know Scott Bergeron was, seemed to be on board with doing that stuff and um, just being wise about what we, our investment. I mean, we have a huge, I don't know how many millions that building is, but it's a lot of money. We need to invest in it and make sure it's done well and on a plan so that it's not like, oh, hey, this year we need, you know, a million dollars for this. Or we, we know well, we it's coming. We have to get all four towns to agree to open up the, the, the frontier agreement. Yep. And that's why I want us to get together. Yeah. And it's also how we can maybe talk about the budget. But yeah. um, I only want to limit it to Public the capital projects. Maybe we can include OPEB. I'm not as upset or worried about the OPEB because most of our hires um, have been after 1986. So um, it's about 100, and, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, it's about 140,000 um, that Frontier pays out of their operating budget now to cover retirees' yeah. health. And that's not, you know, that's not that much money. And so projection-wise, if most of the hires are post- 1986. We don't have that many people that we would probably jump up to. Right. So it's doable. So if we only do the capital projects, I'm okay. I just don't want to open us up to a lot of controversy because, you know, like school choice. We start doing school choice. No, no, I think they're just looking at capital. Yeah. Okay. That's all they, that's all I mean, we really would have to, to agree yeah. not to open it up to more than, like, say, right. capital or OPEB or whatever. Yeah. I, I, it's just the the agreement doesn't address capital, doesn't address OPEP, right. and the school choice, which I feel we overpay. Mm -hmm. Town of Deerfield gets over, is overpays their share, but right. I, okay, so moving on. Public comment. The last thing we do. We have any public comment? Public comment. No comment. Okay. Do we have Welcome. a motion to dissolve? Yeah. Motion to dissolve. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Time.